so she, instead of going to PE, she had to go to do homework. And my wife was pissed because she asked her about homework. And then they got into a fight. And it ended with me saying to my daughter, you need to go apologize to mom. And she said, if I do, I lose. Oh, my God. And I was like, fuck me. <laughs> I was here, grab the mic. We're, yeah. we're st- we already started? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, That's and my true. wife's that way, is if I do, I lose mentality. My yeah. wife cannot apologize. Really? <laughs> Dude, it's one of the worst co- co- qualities about a human being. Yeah, uh, it's my wife apologizes. Someone, it's like it's like people on Twitter that fucking like, hey, we need to dox these kids or whatever the fuck, and then you, you go, hey, you were wrong. You should apologize. And they're like, nah, yeah, uh, I, um, that's my point of view. And you're yeah. like, fucking. <laughs> horrible human beings and there's no accountability for anyone on twitter no michael jackson's about to go fucking down when this airs he will have either gone down or about to go down michael jackson oh yeah they're doing a documentary on him on hbo about him what yeah wait this isn't these aren't connected yeah 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 yeah, 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 (laughs) (laughs) this podcast is all over the fucking map lately i've been partying pretty hard it's good to have you here man yeah i met you a long time ago at flappers right around when uh when you were doing i think Right after America's Got Talent? Um, maybe, maybe, but that was just, I mean, that was, so, that was it was so long ago, re- yeah. regardless. Um, How long ago was America's Got Talent? From four years ago. Um, I mean, they just brought it back, but, you know, my season had just got, got, got done around four years ago, and I think you were doing like a, you were doing like a one-nighter? or I think so, yeah. Or I mean I don't know I don't know if you were do I don't know if you were doing the whole weekend, but uh, I remember no, the, ex- no, I the, ex- doing... the exchange was brief. Yeah, yeah. Um, huge i mean just congrats on everything man everything oh, is you. just thank so he, i mean every everything is i mean everyone everyone in the comedy community has always been like man bert's just doing just killing it right now i just did uh tempe improv and casey says hello uh, um you're you know obviously his, his his favorite comic and i was like you know you should watch me and then he was like yeah bert's <laughs> bert's definitely still my favorite comic <laughs> He's even more so my favorite comic now. Um, so you know, uh, uh, yeah, huge congrats, and uh, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just amazing, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. What's it like? What's it like having America as a fan? It's fine. I <laughs> like it's such a broad, it's such a broad <laughs> spectrum of fans that you go like that. It's not like it's not frat boys, it's not bros, it's not black people, it's not Indians, it's not Asians. Yeah. It's, it, you have everyone as a fan. Yeah, I would have been fine with like just Asians, but uh, <laughs> these, like these, it's fine. It's like, it, it, it's one of these things where when I did the show, it had to, it had to be so, you're, you're not really competing, you're more so ca- ca- campaigning, you know what I mean? You have to do, I guess, material that advances you, but nothing that kind of pushes the envelope. And I, uh, in a way that gets, that gets people offended. So I feel like, you know, at a time it served it, it served it to do like self-deprecating stuff, obviously. Yeah. And then, you know, um, it didn't, it, it just, it, things have gotten even more sens- s- s- sensitive since then. So, hundred percent. You know, so that it, that even presents itself as more of a challenge. So, um, but I mean, to answer, I mean, to answer that, I guess it's like, yeah, it's fine. It's it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I think, I don't know. I think each comedian's ability to evolve with from their opportunities and with their audience ultimately creates the more opportunities. So, do you find it you know. dialing in? Do you find yourself dialing into your your loyal fan base of like shaking off the shaking off the loose leaves yeah yeah it's it's one of those things that's like uh, yeah i mean i had a i I disappointed i think a lot of people uh well i'm talking about just my whole life but this if you want to zero in on the comedy (laughs) i I, i've disappointed so many this is a fucking great statement um I've just disappointed. So, like I did, I did a lot of. Sh- I did a lot of. Sh- you get to tour after something like that just because of the visibility of a show like that, yeah. and then, um, you know, the, I, I'm still fairly very clean. I'm not someone that's vulgar or or, or, or even considered raunchy or anything, and uh, you know, an occasional like swear word or something that's not as clean as what they might have seen on television. There's that always is going to be a challenge. So. You know, I disappointed some 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 people. Where did you grow up? I grew up in in, in 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 Indiana, and then I lived in Vegas for nine years. Wait, how old were you when you lived in Vegas? Nine. Because you're twenty. I'm twenty seven. Yeah. yeah. Nine to like 
nine to like 18. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, so yeah. your formative years were spent in Vegas? Yeah. Yeah. Shh, d- drugs? Never? No, no, no. Wait, did I do them? Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> did you sell them? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. You gotta make, it's Vegas. You gotta make a living. Um, no, uh, no, never did drugs. Booze? Yeah, I drank uh, before I was t- 21. Yeah, I drank a lot. Yeah? Yeah. And, and, I mean, and I guess not a lot. I don't know why I'm saying a lot. Yeah. But, but, but it's some. What, um, how did you, why did you get to Vegas? Your parents divorced? No, um, they moved, they actually moved out to, um, Vegas to do like air conditioning. Uh, obviously that's a pretty lucrative move on their end. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't care for it much, but it was a, uh, you know, it was just kind of a business thing going from the Midwest to there. Uh, and, uh, that kind of left me with some opportunities to do like, you know, performing arts stuff, really, really theater stuff in, 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 in like, you know, uh, middle school and high school. Cause I didn't like, I didn't even want to do comedy. You know what I mean? Like I, really? I, 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 I moved out here when I was, when I was 19 to do acting. So I only worked at, at, at over at flappers, which is a club in over in Burbank that like just as a night job. So that was just my night job. So I could have days free to, 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 to audition and really? stuff like that. Yeah. So it wasn't until like I was, you know, playing this, playing on the softball team over at at flappers when i had this when the, had the injury when i was when i the injury when i was 20 so i had the concussion that that was when everyone like who had represented me as an actor at the time were like well we can't represent you we don't know like you don't have like a lot of the functionality of your motor skills we won't feel comfortable sending you in on things so uh that was what i that was when i started to, to, to do comedy when i felt like just completely shut down by the in- industry sweet tell me about the in- the injury i i had heard uh the folklore about it is you got hit in the throat with a softball correct yeah but that's not the actual that's not the main damage the damage came from me hitting my head on the ground and having con- a, a concussion so wait what happened so walk me through the night walk you through the night so we had a softball game on i think it was a sunday Were you guys playing the laugh October. factory no man no <laughs> no we weren't playing another comedy club that would have been even worse but uh no it's just like local business the ice house has great thing. middle yeah, infielders <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> God, the but shit. it's a really inside joke. The everybody. caps on the ice house team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's it. It was the thing where we were playing on a Sunday, and um, uh, like you know, I played I played baseball growing up, so like third base, shortstop, all that kind of stuff. Like I was super familiar with it, and um, I think you just play with these 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 big dudes or these guys who are full grown men who can just you know smack the. Can I say shit? I can say shit. Yeah, you can okay. say cunt. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we'll, 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 ramp, we'll ramp up to it. But, uh, you, sh- you can say shit. I mean, I can say shit now. Okay. Uh, that changes so much of the story. Um, they, this piece of shit uh, hit the ball. piece of shit hit the shit out of the ball. Uh, I shit myself. And he... Um, <laughs> It was just a big dude, like it was just a dude that took, the grounder took a bad hop. I mean, these guys can, you know, they can smack the ball and, and it took a bad hop and uh, blunted me in the throat and I got super dizzy and fell down and um, I remember like my, I remember, I don't remember much from the rest of the day, but I remember my whole team telling me after the fact, they're like, yeah, he seems a little bit out of it, but when he sent him home, he was like saying he was fine. So the where it actually came into play was where it came into like you know doing irreversible damage was when you when I went to sleep on the concussion so I went home and went to sleep on the concussion I had like a shift where I was supposed to work that night and um when I woke up the next day I didn't remember anything my roommate was just telling me that my my words were even more like uh what's the word like staccato like even yeah. more staccato and broken up and i was saying saying things that were just not like nonsense so he drove me to the hospital and then they flew in like my parents flew in from vegas at the time and then they um they had flown in some other people from like 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 uh specialists from vegas and people came from ucla and they ran a bunch of tests and stuff and uh yeah i was in the hospital for like two weeks or so really? and um then they just kind of the, the, the results were kind of like anticlimactic like it was just it was lackluster in that they were like yeah this is kind of a, a, a freak accident but your voice should your voice should come back to a full r- recovery in you know a month or so and you know it's been you know however many years but either way it was still one of those decisions of those like one of those defining moments for me where i was like all right well i don't even know i don't even know what i'm gonna what i'm gonna do like i felt 
like such a disappointment to uh not america yet but to my <laughs> to, to to myself to my family to to everything so you know and i try to also shy away a lot from just resharing the story just because you know it's a little bit softer and i know that you know i don't know comedy comics sometimes can have shy away from such a silly story because we we all i feel like all have something that motivates us to do it and for me it just be kind of came like a pathway only after the fact like i didn't know that comedy would ever be a thing i i I would do really so not stand up no so then so then you get the injury and then you decide at what point do you decide to get up on stage for the first time um two months after that uh, two months after that, I had done like an open mic and I remember that, like that moment so vividly just because there were like a lot of like, it's, it was an open mic and it was over at Flappers and there's a ton of comics in the room and you can't imagine it's going to like go well or anything. And I was super nervous, uh, uh, to, and I didn't know if there was any like structure in the things that I was saying. And obviously none of the jokes were sus. So, so, super polished or solid or anything but i just remember the comics in the room giving me their their attention and which is i mean you know remarkable on its own um so it it just felt like man like i was just i I, it felt like i even though the jokes were not there they were still with me you know they were still with me and and i was making jokes about the injury and just kind of you're, su- you're at, super mes- at myself. It's crazy to, to it's mesmerizing to listen to someone with a stutter. Oh it's really? Mesmer like I feel like it's uh, I, I, I was before we had planned this out. I had gotten into your YouTube channel. Oh no, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of do it yourself yeah. uh, entertainment. Yeah. Uh, free content, do it yourself content. I'm mm-hmm. a big fucking fan of, and um, but it's interesting. Because I, st- I stutter sometimes. Like, I do stutter sometimes. Yeah. yeah. My friend Hernando Bernal, when I was growing up, had a really insane stutter. Mm. And his... and But I think it was because Spanish was a... Se- English was a second language. Mm. Now I think I'm... Now I'm trying not to stutter. <laughs> but, like, how does a stutter... Do you know... Do you feel it coming on or does it just... It's just... It's like there all the time. I mean, it's just there. I mean, I've gotten really, really good at planning, planning out when it's going to happen and try to... You know, the cadence sometimes is like i want to just make sure i'm always saying the end of my my sentence well you know what i mean which i think sometimes like i get stuck on when in the beginning but then at the end it's it it, it's that's the now i can't do it but that's the part where i try to focus on you know what i mean it's that kind of i've never i've never really dissected it i've had so many people say like well so like talk like how does it work with 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 timing or with like anything and it's like i've never taken the time because i know if i take the time to look at it it, if you can't you can't overthink it because because of obsessive compulsive yeah yeah, i'm gonna leave it if it's fine i'm gonna yeah yeah so but i think it's just i think it's just yeah so i i know there are certain words that get me stuck i know if someone will say to me it sound, if someone says to me your voice sounds sounds so good today, they can guarantee it will not sound as good the rest of the rest of the day. Because then I'm in my head about why I'm sounding so good. I'm yeah. going through my food regimen earlier. I'm like, well, what I I, I had like cam, chamomile did this earlier this morning and snap peas. So it's a thing where this, <laughs> the psychology <laughs> the psychology of someone addressing your voice, which I understand where it comes from. So much of my career, I guess, was. I, I, I started in that I just got lucky in making jokes about my voice and people can as dumb as marketing can be they can go oh that's that, that's the stutter guy they yeah. might not know my name and they might still not but they will be like oh that's that that's that guy who stutters or that's that stutter guy or whatever yeah. and then maybe learn my name after the fact and I guess I'm cool with it but for now it just becomes a thing that's like let's address it uh, at some point in the show and then and then and then move on from it because you don't ever want to be someone who, and I'm sure you n- know this. You don't ever want to be someone who has to rely on like a crutch of any kind. You want to be a guy that just takes his shirt off and doesn't have jokes. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, dude. I. You know what? I told Casey. Told me the story. If I Casey told me the story uh, about that night. He said that you told him that story about how you posted that video. Like what? It, like it was on New Year's Eve or something, or, 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 or something, right? It was really interesting. It's uh, 
I'd hired a marketing team. I had my special. Uh, that, uh, interestingly enough, that special is now streaming on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, um, I just saw it that. Just put up yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I done I done the special for Showtime, and they had said to me, "I think it's a bad idea for you to go shirtless," and I was like, "They're like, I think you should wear a collared shirt. I think you should wear a shirt, definitely a shirt, but you should wear a collared shirt." And I was like, "I backed myself into this corner on accident." Because I had started performing without a shirt as a joke, like as a joke in the room, yeah. you know, and then and then I got comfortable that way, and I noticed I wasn't sweating, I felt more comfortable shirtless, and then it became something I enjoyed doing, and then I got up to the special, and I was like, well, I'm not going to do a, a shirt, shirted special for my first, my second special ever, yeah. so I did it without a shirt on, and no one fucking watched that goddamn special. Showtime was right, everyone turned it off. They saw a guy take his shirt off, and they're like, hard pass. Wow. No one watched that special. It was one of the least performing specials on Showtime that year. This was the second one My you've second, ever done? I did that one in a shirt, but I sweat through it. And it was really conscious that I sweat in it. It bothered me. Wow. I sweat in the gray shirt, and I felt like you no longer could follow what I was talking about. Because of how much you so sweat. All you were doing was watching the sweat grow on my <laughs> neck. And, I, and, and then seeing it on the sides of my head, and I was like, and I didn't know that if... I didn't know that I sweated. Yeah. I didn't I didn't even know it. And then I watched it and the comfortably done. I watched it and I was like, we're pointing to the poster, by the way, everyone. Yeah. Um so that's why I started taking my shirt off in a weird way. It was like, it was also a great way to not have to worry about what you were wearing for the night. Yeah. It was a lot of things, the reasons that I took it off. I took it off as a lark, it used to cheer me up, make me giggle. Yeah. Um and then one time this comic said, you know, if you do it can't believe you could do an act shirtless, let alone I couldn't do a joke shirtless. They'd be looking at my body right. and you have, don't have a good body and i was like yeah oh whatever, whatever. so then special kind of comes out no one really watches it uh i uh, misread my contract from showtime and i thought they said you can post four clips so i clipped out four jokes yeah but of the four that was like technically 37 minutes of my special wow and so i start i hired this social media company to help me uh get views mm -hmm. so we post the first video gets like twenty thousand views i was like I would have expected a little bit more yeah. from a company that knows how to do this. Yeah. And they're like, don't worry, we'll geo-target, we'll geo-market, we'll da-da-da-da-da. Post the next one, maybe 40,000 views. Post the next one, 42,000 views. And then I'm like, fuck it. I, forgot. I just was like, fuck it. You know what? I'm at the bottom of my career right now. I'm the lowest I've ever been in my life. I got fired from Travel Channel. My Showtime special, no one watched. I, do, I, get, I was supposed to do the Funny or Die tour uh the whatever it was called yeah oddball yeah i got pulled from all the dates they fired I, they canceled 12 dates i was on all those dates um i had canceled out all my work for the fall so that i could do this funnier die tour it was going to be i was going to be on tour with tom tom and i yeah. were going to be on tour together i was so fucking excited yeah we're redoing my house and uh my wife schedules a vasectomy i mean all this shit's happening to me New Year's Eve, I go to New Year's, New, do New Year's Eve. I'm getting paid 25 grand, a lot for New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. for me at the time, definitely. Mm -hmm. Still yeah. a lot of money, but yeah. for me at the time, it was a lot of fucking money. Yeah. And they're telling me there are no ticket sales. Like, on a, uh, it's like it's like Thursday, Wednesday, and they're like, there's no ticket sales. And so I, th I want to say on the 27th or the 28th, I posted the machine story thinking it might drive up a little ticket sales, not really thinking anyone was going to see it. I really thought everyone had saw it. What had happened was during that year, this is I think this is the most fascinating thing ever. During that year, on the twenty sixth on the sixth two thousand sixteen, it was like Christmas fell on a on a Monday or on a Sunday and New Year's fell on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. So it was a it was a chunk of week work week. Yeah. That it was like a weird placement where the weekends were versus the weekdays of Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. And so what happened is everyone took that whole week off. So everyone had a full week off. Right. December 27th is apparently the best day to post anything online. Really? December 27th, 28th is the number one day because technically everyone has gotten brand new electronics for Christmas. Right. And they're, and they're looking for things to do on New Year's. So they're online right around that day. Right. And that day when I posted it, it just skyrocketed. It was like the perfect storm. That coupled by a fact that... Uh, and I tell this in my act, but coupled by the fact that there was a young lady uh, who I had gone to school with at Florida State who had been in my Russian class and had been on that trip. Mm. And she she's one of the first people to comment on that video. Mm. And her comment said, uh, 
Um, I was in Burt's Russian class. I was on this trip. The story is 100% true. He fucking robbed us. And then she tagged all my classmates. So, like, it was just a perfect storm of... Combination of of all the right... All these things lining up. I mean, had she not gotten a new iPad or whatever and and been, like, one of the first things you do, I'm, oh, upload Facebook. Oh, let's see what's going on. And I guess I had posted it and she had seen it. She commented tagged it and then all my other classmates were like oh yeah here's pictures from the trip and they posted pictures from the trip that they had and they were like and then people were commenting going like hey is is this uh which one's igor and they're like this one and they're like oh my god which one's saw and like asking questions it was really crazy and then and then the real key to it is at that time is there are people who grab viral videos, mm-hmm. grab videos that they believe will be viral mm-hmm. and post it on their page. Yep. And once it goes on their page, they yeah. automatically go viral because that's what they do for a living. Yeah. And uh, there was a couple guys who did that. And I mean, I watched, I watched, I mean, it was, it was insane. I went from the lowest point in my career, literally going to Jersey and selling out the whole weekend, the first weekend. I'd, I'd sold no tickets over New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, I had sold maybe sold maybe 150 tickets. New Year's, that whole fucking weekend, I sold no fucking tickets. Wow. The next weekend, I'm in Jersey. I got a guarantee of 10 grand, and I sell mm-hmm. out the whole fucking weekend. And Vinny Brand's like losing his mind. He's like, he was like, I sold every fucking ticket. I sold every fucking ticket. He bonused me out. He's like, I got to give you something, man. I just made so much fucking money. Wow. And uh, what, stress, a stress factory? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and that one video, it's amazing how one video or one one weird thing that happens yeah. in your life changes everything. I mean, I just, I mean, I, I'm, I find that story to be like, I mean, just fascinating. It's. I hope it's, I hope comics hear it as inspirational because I yeah. like, cause I, you remember I was 40, I was 44 at the time, 43 or 44. So like I was a two, grown man. Two years ago, three years ago? Three years ago. I was I was 43. I was a grown up. I had two kids. I'd been on Travel Channel for 8 years. I thought that was my ticket. Yeah. I got fired and I was like, what the fuck do I do now? I guess I just host another reality show and yeah. I, I love stand up, but my special didn't do well and I thought it was my best work. I, I really was so proud of that fucking special. Yeah. And um and no one saw it and I went, what the fuck, man? What do you got to do to get ahead in this business? Yeah. You can it's not about the work, dude. I go online right now and I I today I look at like these comics that are posting jokes online that are fucking hilarious mm-hmm. on Instagram mm-hmm. and I go, it's not enough. Yeah. It's, it's a funny joke, but you, God damn it. Like what is the fucking math? Yeah. What is the math, ma- magic math yeah. to make it happen? Yeah. And I, and I honestly, I, I look at what you're doing and I go, it's not just being great on America's Got Talent. It's keeping that bar raised, mm-hmm. starting your, what do you have, like 1.6 million YouTube followers, mm-hmm. yeah. keeping that bar raised, creating great content and never letting it go and and being brave enough to let it suck too. Mm-hmm. Like not, I'm not saying any of your We're videos suck, but like, suck. but no, but like <laughs> no. that's a lot of what my Instagram is, is I post videos that don't get any yeah. views and suck. Yeah. And just being like, ah, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. The next one will be good. So have you found that over your career you've learned to 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 take things less per personally, like when you you're less emotionally invested? Because I feel like you're the type of person who gets who goes all in as far as what you emotionally invest in what you do and you believe in it. Uh-huh. And then it's hard when something doesn't doesn't perform well or doesn't do well. Uh, I mean, have you learned? I don't know. Just as seasoned as you've become, to not take that as as. As personally, as personally, or is it just par for the course? Or a little bit. I I did this. Uh, I I thought I was gonna make this viral fucking video. I put money into it. It was me running in slow motion uh, in my backyard <laughs> in underwear. <laughs> no one saw it. <laughs> man, I was fucking so bummed. I mean, I I posted it and then watched it get like five thousand views on Instagram and then deleted it and posted it again. I was like, wait, wait. No, 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 you guys don't understand. You guys must be doing this wrong. <laughs> well, they're at lunch right now. They're at lunch, so let me do yeah. it. Yeah. You know what? Uh, maybe I need the Australia. I'll... It's, I, I have, de- I definitely have, I did this special, it's <laughs> Netflix, the one I just, that just yeah. came out, and I literally said, I can't, I mean, I laugh at this now, I can't tell you how hard I fucking worked on that goddamn special. Obsessive 
compulsively worked on that special. Yeah. I, I mean, I overthought that special. Like, you yeah. know, o- a paralysis by overanalysis? Yeah. I, I looked at logarithms of how... I mean, I, I, the, the way I put together that special... And when, uh, when Netflix said to me... I mean, like, anytime anyone... I, mean, I was so proud of it. But anytime anyone said to me, it's a great special, I go, Really? Yeah, like, that's, my, that's way my brain. Rogan told me that on his podcast. He goes, "Dude, I love your special." And all I said was, "Really?" <laughs> yeah. Tom Segura, my best friend. Yeah. I do his podcast to promote my special, and he goes, uh, "He goes, dude, this is the best thing you've ever done." And I was like, "I literally wow. said, you watched it." Yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, why would?" And I go, "You're not just saying you watched my special." Yeah. I am. I take things very personally. Sure. Uh, but in the business side of it. It hurt my feelings when I got fired from Travel Channel. I, yeah, I feel I went to dinner with that lady, and a, and a lunch with her, and I talked to her about what I wanted to do with the network, and she seemed super receptive. And then a week later, she called me. And she said, "Yeah, we're glad it's decided to no longer work with you." And I was like, "No re- no reason, just kind of." Dude, I, do you ever been broken up with, and you're and you you scramble, and you try to like yep. at least save it a little bit? Yep. I did that on the phone with that oh. fucking poor woman. Oh no! She said, We're, we decided to stop working with you, and I should have said thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> I was like, okay, but I don't really want to work with anyone else. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you if you're cool, I'll just you know how about I just I have just I'll stick around for a little bit, and then she's like, we no longer want to work with you, and I was like, but I have some ideas. I, I don't want to take them other networks. So well, I'll go to you guys first because I love you guys, and I really want to just tell everyone I'm not leaving for. for oh my god, it was embarrassing i hung yeah. up and i was like that is not how a grown is man it, behaves is it some other host it's another host it's another host <laughs> <laughs> it's an Adam Richman. <laughs> dude i was i was i take things very personally yeah. I, and i think i've gotten better at that one of the things that i was really hung up with in my career is i would invest with um club owners and that, like, I would, I would be like, if I get in with the club owner or the mm-hmm. booker, mm-hmm. then I know that I'm safe. Yeah. And I didn't realize that that's just a, that's like a fucking lose lose. Yeah. Because they're gonna get fired. Yeah. <laughs> they're just a comedy club manager. Yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. their goal in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wasting your time sh- sh- schmoozing the tickets guy. He's like, I don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why do you think do you do you think you take things personally? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Everything. Everything. Everything that everything that ha- everything that happens or, or, or doesn't happen, it, I don't I I'm upset. Really? Yeah. I don't I don't like your story to me your story to me is something that is you know, it's stamina, you know? You've had such a l- l- a long career. Yeah. To ha- take all of those losses, and I think in a, in, a, in, a, in a series of losses, to have a huge win at the end, I mean, it never goes, it never goes, I, if it, I don't even have a long enough trajectory in my, in, in my own career to establish this pattern yet, but if I've sat back enough and watched enough, I've been able to see if you get excited about something, that thing doesn't happen. Yep. If you, if something you forget about, happens it's because you forgot about it and the the weird psychology behind it is so it's almost masochistic it's like why do we you know like i did i I did i did a a showcase last night and i i specifically did a set i did an open mic at the at the at the haha right before just so i could bomb just so the showcase which is predominantly industry and they're never great uh feels better by comparison yeah so it's like it's this thing where it's like you, you you never get any kind of you never get any kind of confidence about yourself because the second that you come in with with hubris I don't know why it just it takes you back down. Not that I've ever been someone who's 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 got an ego or who's crazy uh uh about like I'm just I'm passionate about my work and I'm passionate about what I put into it. And sometimes it's as simple as just posting a thing that that was innocuous or that that was so simple and then that can that can lead to get more hits rather than you being like, oh, I'm going to do a, I've got the best idea. That's why when you said I'm going to shoot a viral video, I was like, no, you're not. If you think, oh. <laughs> if you think you're going to shoot a viral thing, it's never going to go. Dude, go, go. I, I never, ever, everything that's gone off for me has been an accident. Yeah. Like something's burning. That's a, a very, I mean, yeah. it's pretty successful in comparison yeah. to what I've made. And that's all that someone was saying. So how, how long did you guys come up with the pitch? Like, and I was like, Oh no no no! 
Segura, me and Bill Burr were walking through a kitchen and they said, you guys have access to this kitchen. And Tom said, hey, why don't you do that stupid cooking show you've been talking about? And Bill goes, what's the name? I said, something's burning. And he goes, let's do it on Thursday, the three of us. Wow. And we just did it. And then people liked it. Yeah. And you're like, hey, man, do you want to do more of these? And we're like, I guess. Yeah. It's, those things, I always think, I think that's why pilots suck so bad. Yeah. Like, I've never seen a good fucking pilot of yeah. anything in my life. Yeah. Like, uh, scripted. They're always weak. Sure. But it's because everyone's so emotionally invested yeah let the series go give them an order for 24 let everyone relax yeah and it, they're fucking amazing yeah so yeah. the beauty of netflix is you they order 12 it's all done at the, the yeah end. you're like yeah. hey man this is gonna be fun yeah. let's get this going yeah i mean i don't think the network system is set up to succeed no and it's just like it's it's weird too because if it, if you go if you at attack something with the intention of it were of it succeeding rather than having like the the foundation of being it being fun or something yeah. you're excited about then it does it never like you know sometimes i'll try to post even something like around like a holiday like if you post like oh this is a holiday sketch or a, or a, or a little throwaway joke that you put up that's related to thanksgiving or valentine's day or whatever it never does because i planned it that 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 way my viral video is for mother's day <laughs> 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 that's so funny it's uh yeah it's everything i've ever done that was successful i didn't want to do entirely yeah. like <laughs> like yeah. like i was just like i mean yeah sure everything i've wanted so much i'm like oh i really hope this goes yeah uh, it doesn't yeah. i mean i take that back the two all the specials all my specials i'm really like excited for I, I was always you know excited for i was hoping yeah. they would do good but like Bert conquer i didn't want to do the show at all there mm -hmm. was a, a show i had on travel channel uh, travel channel flew out the president of travel channel flew out to take me to lunch to convince me to do it this is and i was just like uh, yeah i don't really i don't really care and then i did it first season with the first president fucking number two rated show on the network yeah and they're like we're in we want to give you a contract you're and then you're like okay and then they cancel it Mm -hmm. And then they're like, hey, do you want to do the show Trip Flip? And I was like, uh. Literally, they said to me, we've ordered 13. We want you to host it. So go out and host one episode and see if you like it. Yeah. And I was like, all right. So I flew out to Denver. I did it. I was like, I could do that for a living. That'd be fun. Yeah. And it's the things that, like, how many, I've had so many network development deals fall apart. So fucking many yeah. it is ridiculous yeah and it's also it, it creates i guess like a little bit of not you don't you can't rely on anyone else to maybe bolster your opportunities you kind of have to do it for yourself which is kind of what we were, we were talking about earlier it's just so much about it, it relies so much on you it's the most frustrating feeling in the world i don't, I don't you you may not know this entirely, but I know this so. There's so many comics that know this feeling is wanting to come up with a way for people to find you to come to your show. Like yeah. sitting in a hotel room going, what can I do? Yep. Like if I jump off this wind, out this window and yep. I like, how do I get people <laughs> to want to know who the fuck I am? Yeah. It is so frust. I have so many. It's I started doing promo videos. Mm-hmm. Um, before, uh, bef like a, probably a year before when I do a date, I do a promo video and it was just like, come on, man, please. Yeah. And then my promo video started working and you're like, oh, okay, great. And you're like, oh, they already knew who I was. They just needed to be reminded I'm coming to their right, city. Right. Right. I did a video. <laughs> it was my first time in, in, in doing Canada. And when you do like. You do like internet to get any international whatever to take you is already they have to be so sure you're gonna do yeah tickets, and I at the at the end of I think 2017 I was going to do some Canada dates and I was just so nervous for it. <laughs> I was so nervous for it, and they're like Drew. So to get tickets for like Vancouver, uh, let's let's get like a promo video to put out there. So. I did this thing where I was talking, the camera's real tight on my face, I'm talking that I'm coming to Canada, and as you're zooming out, there's maple syrup being poured onto my head, and it falls down my face, or whatever, and it's just, and me never acknowledging it, that was like the whole thing, and I shot that video, 
four times. I had to go shampoo my head three times. It was the du- and it got uh, twenty thousand views or something on Facebook. <laughs> It got, it Uh-oh. got, people who commented from Canada were like, you know, we're not all about maple syrup. And I was just so, <laughs> I look so dumb for so many reasons. Oh. I the- should, I remember doing it the second oh. and third time I'm doing it. And there's still syrup from, I was like, well, if it doesn't look like, if it doesn't, if it looks like there was syrup in a past take, then it won't look like it was organic, like it was, or, like I'm doing this the first time. Yeah. So it just, you know. Yeah, that's just so funny. I mean, I've, that. I've I've cutting it down. For me, if I shoot anything, it's like it becomes leaving, leaving your answering machine message, mm-hmm. your greeting. Yeah, I, I become obsessive. Yep. So I can only do it one. T- I can do it one time. I have one. One time I was doing. I set up a whole camping scene in my front yard, mm-hmm. and I was I was going to San Francisco. And I was saying, "Hey guys, I'm out. I'm out camping in Yosemite before my sh- my show, mm-hmm. and uh, I would love to see you guys at my show." And then, and my daughter was running the camera, and for some reason, she just fucking pushed in, and then pulled out, and the guy that was delivering Blue Apron just started walking right up to me, and came up. I'm in the middle of the shot, and he goes, "Hey, uh, delivery," and I went, "Yeah, thank you." I'm in the middle of my, hey, San Francisco, I'll be, I'm in Yosemite. And it shows that I'm in my front yard. And I got done. And I go, I go, hey, did you get a shot of that guy? And she goes, oh, yeah. When I saw him walking up, I just pulled out. And I went, are you serious? Wow. And I was like, Sh-. it was so funny is when I started watching the video, I, I, when I, I didn't know what she, I didn't know that she pulled out it for originally. Yeah. So when I started watching the video, I noticed that she had cropped my head out a little bit. Of the video. Yeah, yeah. I go, Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, and she goes, oh, don't worry, I, I pull out. And I go, really? And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I saw the guy walking and I went to a wider shot and I went, oh my God, you're a fucking genius. You, uh, yeah. Yeah. She's that, my two daughters have come up with funnier things for me to shoot. Yeah. The, the, the way their brains work, they'll go, like they did one thing one time. I didn't know it happened, but Isla is my youngest the one that got in a fight with my wife today. Yeah. She was like, "Hey, can you squirt water into my mouth from the?" She was drinking. She drinks water out of the out of the refrigerator mm-hmm. like this, like just yeah. put her mouth under it and shooting in her mouth. Yeah. And she goes, "Hey, Dad, do you think you could shoot it into my mouth if I laid on the ground?" And I went, "Yeah, yeah, definitely." And so she laid on the ground, and I shot it in her mouth and hit her in the nose. And she was like, "Oh, nice." And, and she goes, "You try it." And I was like, "Okay." I had no idea. I yeah. get down, I lay down, and she gets a cup of water and just pours it on my face. My eyes are closed. And I didn't know what happened. So and so I hit stop record and I left out the fact that they that she had done that. Yeah. My reaction to knowing that she had did that. Yeah. And so number one thing I always go, if like you're gonna shoot anything, just let it record from way in the beginning way, and way, way in the before. end. Yeah. yeah. And also like, well, first of all, to 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 address like the one time thing, I'm starting to do that more often too. You, because it, just shoot it once and then I don't want to see it. Like yeah. Take it and then don't, don't let me see it. Cause How I'm long gonna, have you been doing your vlog? I've been doing the vlog for, man, three. F- f- I started it four years ago. Wait, That's 2015, it. four years ago. I started a vlog f- four years ago. Yeah. I just kind of started to do it like, as just like my do- people love my dog. And I was like, all right, well, she'll sit and she'll sit, she sits perfectly still in a chair. People love that for whatever reason. And then just kind of making it its own little uh, thing and kind of getting back. I, I did it just the same way that Bill did the podcast. I wanted to just get better at writing jokes like right there. Yeah. I wanted to just do it and maybe retell a thing. If I can pull a thing from it that I can use somewhere, all the, all the better. Yeah. But for the most part, like otherwise we're just writing, we're, we're, get, we're not, we're having, we have a writing process and we're not getting it out there somewhere. So it has no, it has not a chance of being seen by anybody if you're not putting it out there. So, that was kind of how that like kind of took and that com- combined with the tr- traffic from America's Got Talent helped and that got me like my first I don't know maybe 80,000 sub- sub- subscribers or so, so. Did you you did you were doing the vlog and then America's Got Talent happened yeah. that's fucking perfect so it's one of those things that See like, that's what you need you need a place to centralize them yeah when they find you they need to go where do I get this guy backlogged of all this stuff exactly yeah. so then when I, in order to take it from you know 80,000 subscribers to like the next one I start you start to get more and more you know 
incessive about the ideas and what it is that, you know, honing the idea even more. And then it started to become, how do I create even more content for, for, for my channel? And, you know, I'm, I'm someone who like, like with the vlog I bought, I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about YouTube. I didn't know anything about, um, cameras really I didn't know anything about the software I just researched it for like a day and then I bought all of it before I did it because that way it would force me to, yeah. to do it so when I did that that was kind of what made me stick with it and then like a year later or two years later after it then I was like you know what I want to do an animated show I just want to do an animated show I want to work on my writing in a scripted format and get better at it I'm gonna hire an anim. I'm gonna do the same thing. I hired. I paid my animator before I hired him to do it, and then I uh, just the same way just started uploading to YouTube. Um, and you know, like I don't know why. It's just it the 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 idea of something being second guessed. I I have to get out of my own way in order for it to happen. Otherwise, I'll talk my I'll talk myself out of it. Yeah. If your body's already doing it, then your mind can I guess get in get get in the way and. That's the fucking, that's the key to life. Yeah. I feel like it's one of those things that if, it's like, if you want to work out, work out, get out of bed. Yeah. Get out of bed. Go, go get out of bed and make a cup of coffee. Yeah. And get on the treadmill. Just get on the treadmill. It's like all that. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't work out today. I got fucking very, how drunk was I last night? I was, do, you have a, do you have a show last night or? No, I had, uh, I did Something's Burning last night with oh, uh, nice. Brad Williams and Adam Ray. Oh, I, and love, I got love those guys. Fucking wasted. Uh, Brad Williams fell out off the stool. Oh man! It was we were hammered. Yeah, and so I came back. I did my reads for my podcast, mm -hmm. and I don't. I was fucking obliterated. Are you drunk when you're doing do, doing the reads? <laughs> it took, me like it took me like forty minutes to get through them. I'm fucking, and I'm not. I'm not a good out loud reader. Yeah. So like I and I had to have my wife read one because I did, I was I was like fucking wasted. I called this guy Brett Brock who does uh, my posters. Mm -hmm. I called him to tell him how great he was. <laughs> <laughs> not for another poster just he wrote he i i didn't remember it i didn't remember it and he texted me this morning and he was like he wrote oh what's this one uh jesus christ I fucking should never have opened my phone. Dear he, he texted me. And Ariel he goes, Bold 16. Hey, <laughs> did I miss a call from you last night? I was at a bar chatting up a nice lady. Hope all's well. Kicking ass on your tour. And I went, yeah. I wrote, Leanne and I were drunk. It was me. <laughs> Leanne did nothing, barely drinks. Uh, but yeah, I was I was <laughs> wasted last night. I waxed poetically to Leanne about something, I'm sure. I wonder if we got in a fight. She was in such a nasty mood this morning. Mm. Um, but... uh. I don't know what we were talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, uh, but just, just go you back did, to your yeah, vlog. Yeah. So, so that's, but I, I, I so I started, what, who inspired you? What did you, was there any vlogs you were watching? No. Really? No. I, like I said, I didn't know shit about, about, about YouTube. I didn't know shit. About, I didn't know anything. It was just like, I just, I have to do, like, just like you were saying, like sitting in the hotel, like, what am I, like, what am I going to do? I did, like, I, I don't have. I don't have any TV credits. I don't have any TV appearances. You know, I was I was submitting with JP a bunch to do Conan, and uh, he was like, "Yeah, this just needs to be a little bit better, or maybe this here." And um, it felt like I it, it just feels you just feel stuck. And then I had heard from a friend. You know, I had just done. Um, I had heard from a friend who had said like, you know, I did 500 sets last year, and then I got like last comic standing. And I just took it as a pure, like a purely empirical number where I yep. was like, this is a goal I'm going to do. So the 2014, which was the year before America's Got Talent, I did like 590 something sets. I just did it. I was out every night and, you know, my, my, my personal life suffered, my health suffered, my relationship suffered, but I got the reps in that I needed to perform in pretty much every environment multiple times a night. And miraculously, you know, like a month or two later, you know, they're not correlated, but I was for whatever reason ready to do like AGT, which was the first like kind of big thing. And I was just lucky enough to have videos backlogged, um, you know, from so, doing it. So when people saw you on there, Googled you, they were like, oh, here's this 
here's this guy with all these videos. And then it, and then after that, the challenge, after people had discovered us from, uh, discovered me from like my vlog, then it became, how do I translate that into ticket sales for my standup? Because people might have just found me, like it, it, it had this weird, like when, you know, it had this weird, uh, their audiences were never the same. There wasn't really like crossover. There were people who watched like America's Got Talent who kind of knew me for stand-up, if you can say what I did on there was, I guess, like uh, what you would want to see for an hour. And then you've got this whole other demographic of people who are just like dog lovers, yeah. you know? Or, oh, this is, a, this is a dog with this guy who kind of does funny things. Uh, and then you've got, you know, and then so then you've got, then you've got comedy goers, like regular comedy goers, the people you want at your shows who are like, oh, I love, you know, I love the Tom Segura's and the Burt Kreischer's and all of these people yeah. of the world. So they're three different. So it, it oftentimes got to be like where people would come to my show for, st like for my stand up show and they would be like, they would be like, where was your dog? Your dog wasn't on stage with you. And I don't get like, I, I had, you know, I had no idea you did stand up. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, I've done it for, you know, way, way long. Yeah. And, and then now there's this whole other separate demographic of people where now I post a lot of these clips of just me riffing, just things that are just off the cuff stuff that you can get rid of. Um, and those videos I've started to post a lot of on Facebook and a lot on, 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 on YouTube. And those sometimes perform better than any of the other things. Mm -hmm. So it's just now it's this whole other demographic of people who come to my shows sometimes to hear, 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 hear my material, which, you know, is fine. But then they want, they want to shout something out and be play. They want to play that way. with what, the was, that. What, Like, what do you mean when you say you, you just get, throw things out there? Like just, just riff on an idea or yeah, no, no. Like just, just, you know, crowd, just crowd interaction. Like yeah. it, it, it started from like, it started from some kind of, videos that got like some good traction on Facebook and YouTube just very similarly like that was why when you know Casey was telling me the story I was just so like that's just an, I mean I can relate to it just so just so just so much um yeah just like something happened like I think one of the one of the oh yeah this is what happened one lady in Sacramento in you know July of this past year she was super drunk um and she was like dancing like next to the stage and I was just someone who was so A through Z. Do your set A th A, A through Z. Yeah. You know what I mean? Give them the best jokes, and they won't have they won't have to say anything else. You won't have to feel like you were in the room. Yeah. You know, which is amazing. Feeling like I having like my background from theater and not you know just not even address you know. So that was what I always wanted. It was always like being like just great joke like you know yeah. work it and then rework it until it's until it's just great. I was like um, that until I realized I couldn't write great jokes. <laughs> I was such a bad joke writer. I still am. No, what, really? I'm, I'm, no. I can, I'm, I can, I can take something funny and turn it into a, a bit. But I, I can, I've never been good at, um, like what it's held us, like straight up, straight up joke writing. Sam Morell, yeah, like those guys that, dot dot dot, and it's like David Tell is just so fucking masterful at it. So then, what's your, so then, what's your like process? What's the way that you kind of a, a, a tackle a thing i look at um sometimes it'll be sometimes it'll be one thing that i think is absolutely brilliant like one thing i have this bit right now about uh it happened 17 years ago and I, i've had it in my head for 17 years for 17 years i've had this bit i was at i went to um i went to a uh uh, traffic school 17 years ago and um, our teacher had a had a atrophied right arm totally atrophied right arm wow and the black guy sitting behind me I had gotten high with before the class um, before this thing I, I didn't know him but we he was mm. smoking a joint and I hit it with him and and the teacher said uh, what's who notices something different about me and I put my hand up and as soon as I put my hand up, I realized I didn't have to have the answer. Like no one else put their hand up, right? Uh -huh. And the guy's like, "What is it?" And I didn't know how to say it. I didn't know how to. I didn't. I was like, "Cause all I was thinking is you have a baby arm," but I didn't want to say that to him. So I was like, "That's rude." But I didn't know what it was called. Right. I didn't know. I didn't know if it was rude to point it out. And I, I stalled for so long. And this is the only thing that was funny in this whole story to me. That what was hilarious was I stalled for so long that the black guy leaned forward and tapped me on the back and goes, "It's his arm." <laughs> It was it was the funny so, but the but the joke 
couldn't end there, right? Because it, right. it, it needs more. It, sure. So I ended up, I, I was uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable with that bit for a long time. But so I look at moments like that yeah. where maybe I did the dumb thing and I didn't re- and 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 I didn't realize it until it exactly happened. The joke I have on my special, which is probably the joke I'm probably proudest of, uh, because as I as I I wrote it, it I didn't write it. It happened, mm-hmm. but as I crafted it, I guess on stage, I realized no one will ever write this joke. Like mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, it's nice to know that my my material's not stealable because it just it, it's so. Yeah, thumbprinty. Yeah, but was the one about my about pajamas? I my wife yeah. wanted pajamas, and I I didn't I didn't think it. I just bought her seven pairs of pajamas, and then yeah. individually wrapped them. And my she unwrapped the first pair of Christmas, and goes, "Oh, pajamas!" And it's just like the moment of raising your hand. I went, "Oh fuck!" If that's her reaction to the first pair, this <laughs> is just gonna get sense. really. And my dad just goes, "Who the fuck buys someone pajamas?" He's my dad sitting next to me, and I was like, "Oh god, this is gonna get bad." I know it's happening. I'm I'm seeing the car wreck happening in front of me. Yeah. They don't know they're in a car wreck. Yeah, and. She opens the second pair and goes, more pajamas. And my dad real quick does the math and looks at me and goes, you are a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I was, I, I didn't, once again, it's a case of not, like I had that, it happened, it happened when we lived in an apartment. So it happened a while ago. I told her on stage and I didn't, I didn't really have an ending to it. I just kind of told the, that part or whatever. Yeah. And Adam uh, at the comedy store mm. pulled me aside. Adam, he, get, he pulled me aside and he goes, that's my favorite joke you have and i was like really he was like dude that is so fucking funny because i can visualize it like yeah. that's you got to do more of that and i went yeah because i was I, you know if you look at that old special all my jokes were like uh i was writing as if i was writing as if um as if i was writing for another comic i was a writer i wasn't bert i was just writing right. like you know what cops hate when you touch their faces yeah you know uh you know what's fun to do when you get in the back that's a, well you know what's fun to do that's a dane cook ism right. already when you get in the back of a car pretend you're in a, a cab pretend you're in a cop car it was like right. a lot of uh, i was so drunk i put a quarter in the ignition i thought yeah. you know like i it they're like not to disrespect kyle cease but they're all kind of stuff that kyle cease would do and i, I when i'd watch kyle cease do it i was like it's not amazing mm-hmm. but it's palatable yeah, yeah, it, yeah it gets the job done yeah but it's it's nothing that's going to stop in your tracks now i kind of look for something that's super authentic like uh in in my head and then i and then i and but it's got to have the one thing yeah and if i get like that that one that one pst, it's his arm moment i need yeah. that one pst, it's its arm moment and then i can work it in and out from, from, from there i can i can go oh, okay you know what i and a lot of times what i do is i overwork it sure and then i and then i realize uh oh i can just say it i don't need to overwork this bit i yeah. can just say it and get you yeah to, you know sometimes you'll overwrite a moment that d- it just doesn't need it so you end up edit, edit, editing it down anyway yeah do you do you i you can't you can't write a joke with your thinking of your stutter no, because I wrote a joke for you this morning. Oh, good. Yeah, good, I was good. like, I was like, uh, I was like, uh, if you could stutter it, if you could place your stutter in it, you'd be like, I really hate nig 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 negotiating. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> but, that's so funny. But but you can't do that. You just yeah. It's a, it, like that's that's you know that's one of those things that like I wish I I I, I, I wish I could do that in a way that was like. That fa- that was that was organic, but yeah. it's also like you know, it, it just is evolved. Maybe a few years ago, when it was when it was so it was so prevalent. Yeah. Um, Has your stutter gotten better? I th- I think so. It's gotten to be where a place where it's just gotten more comfortable. I've got I've gotten more comfortable in saying, "Ah, eh, this is what I have," or whatever. And not, not I was just so when it happened, I was so wrought with feeling that everyone cared about it it's how self-indulgent of me to just think that anytime i was talking to someone that's all i would just would think that's all they're thinking that's all they're thinking that's that that's it and that's they're gonna define me they're gonna write me off they're gonna think i'm dumb they're gonna think i you know and i think it's just gotten to be better as far as like addressing it and then you know obviously i've taken space space, space, speech therapy and oh really um yeah yeah Uh, but not actually for not actually to 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 rehabilitate the stutter itself just to get better at um 
not vocally harping on my voice so much. So just like, you know, when we perform, you know, when you perform, it's so long. And if you do the meet and greet after the fact, you're using your voice so much. You so, don't have to tell me. Yeah. Imagine going to a bar and drinking. I do, now I tell my fans or my crowd where I'm at, I go, all right, I'm going to go to this bar down the street. And then fucking a thousand people show up. I ended up shouting over everyone. Yeah. All I'm saying is thank you the whole time. Yeah. And and then I get to back to the bus and my voice is shot and i literally am like throat coat throat coat steam room yeah i'm so i have two weeks off right now and i'm so excited to get my voice totally back yeah because that when your voice is completely if when you have your voice at its full capacity yeah god you're a fuck i did a show in vegas and i was losing my voice Mm. and i had a panic attack on stage and i thought that's an aggressive way of saying a pan i didn't have a panic attack but i had a moment on stage where i thought what if my voice voice just quit out right now just yeah. went because I was like literally pushing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I yeah I did when I I had I had, in 2018 I think no no 2017 I had uh, strep and mono at the same time. I was Shut performing. up. Yeah, man, it was brutal. I mean, I like I just I just wasn't using my voice pro- pro- properly. I just wasn't using it properly. So I went to you know speech therapy, and she was like, "Look, man, you're doing a lot of like vocal glottal attacks, and all of this is." These things aren't, aren't 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 necessary, and the wiring of your vocal cords are different now because of your because of your stutter. But you, there's some there's some techniques you need to practice to get better at it. Is and a stutter a muscle thing or a head thing? It's 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 uh, physiological, is what they. Oh, told what does me. that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I'm just rela- I'm just reading the file. Uh, it's uh, it was it was t- it was t- it was neurological when it happened, but when they ran a. Um, what is the thing where they do the scan? the on your MRI. vocal cord? Yeah, when the, they ran the MRI, that was neurological. But when they did the thing, the uh, what's the oh a throat scope? The, yeah, 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 yeah. The Dude, second, I've had a throat scope. That is the most tick. uncomfortable thing. I haven't done the prostate thing yet, but I can guarantee you, I'll I will prefer that over the stethoscope. The throat scope. I'll tell you, not to get anyone's head about a throat scope, but when you have, <clears throat> I used to have. Uh, acid reflux same and i would yeah and it would i would i i don't know why i stopped having it i used to have it bad really yeah 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 and i'd you think always like your diet changed or maybe just eating i don't know less before bed or something i don't know i used to burp a lot so girl pointed that out to me one you day don't, you, don't, you don't burp as much i don't burp as much hmm. i used to burp i didn't realize that we were in a car one time he's like you know you, you just burped 15 times and wow. i was like really yeah he's like you burp a lot yeah <clears throat> um, I don't know what happened. I stopped getting acid reflux, but I yeah. used to have I used to have like pains in my throat. Mm-hmm. And one time I had one that was really bad and it wouldn't go away. And they said you need to get a throat scope, see what it is. And so they, as they're doing a throat scope, the woman I'm looking in the woman's eyes, and she, cause she, for those of you listening, they do the throat scope and they have like a it's all, I want to my recollection might be bad, but I want to say it's like a gun with like a with like a camera on it. Yeah, yeah, and, and then it's, they, it can curve like yeah. a little finger. And it's a, it's a big it's a hose that, with a gun and a camera attached yeah, to it. Yeah, it looks like a yeah, it looks like a glue gun. Yeah, ant eater thing. Yes. And so she goes down my nose to do the throat scope. I think she went down my nose. Yep, down and, the nose. And she is looking at it. And I realize if I have cancer, I'll see it in her eyes first. <laughs> <laughs> and I started panicking so hard, just going, don't change your eyes. Don't change your eyes. Don't change your eyes. And yeah. she goes, uh, yep. She was like, oh, I, th- I think this is from allergies. I think she gave me like a, a nasal spray to take. Yeah. And it was the greatest fucking nasal spray. This nasal spray had a Xanax effect on you. So if you took it, you just fell asleep. Ooh. She's like, take it at night. It'll help you sleep. Yeah. And the first night I took it, I got high from it. I like was like, it was like taking a Xanax. I felt very relaxed. And I could breathe through my nose, legit breathe through my nose for the first time. And I made out with my wife for the first time breathing through my nose. And n- normally when I kiss, I, I take a breath and kiss and then come back and take a breath and kiss. It's almost like like I'm like I'm free diving. <laughs> but I breathing through my nose. I was breathing through my nose for the first time, and it was tickling my wife's face. She was like, "Hey, slow down your breathing." I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh man, that is that is so funny." Yeah, but um, but yeah, so but like yeah, I had 
so I had I had I had the same thing acid reflux yeah and it started to what happened was is the the vocal exhaustion combined with the acid reflux had had the acidity had like burnt my vocal cord basically so yeah. I had like a for for some part of the year I was performing on basically it was like a granuloma cyst almost on my actual vocal cord Wow. So I was just feeling, and that was in 2017, and that was at the peak of like me doing. I was doing, I was gone like 200 days of the year, more than I was. So wait, tell me, tell me about that tour then. So you get America's Got Talent, mm -hmm. you do it, you feel the pop, like you, 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 social media starts exploding. Sure, you go from like I'm guessing like 3,000 followers to like fucking 15 in a night, and you're like, mm -hmm. shut the fuck up. Yeah, and yeah. it starts blowing up. You you have an agent at the time, manager. You're unrepresented. No, I di I did have I did dif different than now, but I did at the time. Yeah, and so it explodes. Had Taylor Williamson done it yet? He had. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He had. So so there was a path that you knew was yeah, was I, carved. You're like, oh, I can go do the road legit. Sure. I mean, it was it was it was a thing where like I didn't even know it was going to be possible for me. Like after the fact, and I did something so stupid where. While I was on the show, I didn't book like a ton of dates out ahead of time because I was like, "Whoa, I want to keep it open in case what? I don't know what I was waiting. For. I don't know what I was waiting for. I was like, in case, in case I'm just comedy, then in case I've just I graduate <laughs> I wanna, comedy. I want to hold things off in case the uh, Robert De Niro yeah. calls. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to fucking be too committed. <laughs> It's exactly what I was. It's exactly were you what working I was saying the door earlier. still? Were you working at Flapper still? Uh, uh, I was no. I was. I had to balance doing a college gig every two months, and then I could live barely. Yeah, barely. Um. So, but I would. I was still kept on the roster, so I would occasionally jump, 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 jump back into Flappers. Yeah. Um. To to work the door. Uh. But yeah. So. It was a thing that like I just I didn't have any tour dates on this on the on the, at the time I was doing the show and so when I it, it was you know like people still wanted to see me but I only started to add them like after the fact and you know I wish I just I, I wish I that was something I had done but um, yeah it was just it was just this tour of like like it, it's exciting because people only see you for however many minutes on that show mm -hmm. and then they also might have their own preconceived notions about what it is you're going to do or what it is you're capable of and it's like no i've got this hour or so or more or, or that i've been working on even since before america's got talent so i just wanted to shed all of that material and do a whole new thing so you guys can feel you know i mean so small. yeah i mean what did you what did you feel after you did the machine do you still do the machine story I tell the machine story every show really i will be telling it for the rest of my life i think Wow. Which I'm very, I'm, I'm very, with. very cool with. You're cool with that. I'm very cool with it. Here's the deal. You don't. Sorry to interrupt. No. You don't feel. You don't ever feel like you're not. Like like you you, you can have fun with that story every single, single uh, time. I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, Bill Burr, probably the two most, two of my most uh, influential guys in my life. I mean, obviously. You know, Tom and Ari and are yeah. huge. I, I talk business stuff, creative stuff with Tom and Ari probably more than anyone. Mm. Um, but when it comes to like the way I approach the work, mm -hmm. Joe and Bill or Joe Rogan and Bill yeah. Burr are probably the two most influential people. I, I care about what they say. I, I, I listen to them a little louder than I listen to other people. They were the re they were part of the reason that like when I, right before I got fired from Travel Channel they were like you need to get the fuck away from that network and get back into stand up. They're like Joe was like you're too funny to be doing that fucking show. You're too funny to be wasting your talent. And Bill Bill just kept looking at me. He goes he was, kept saying two things. You're not a fucking movie star. Like you're not a good looking guy. Like what are you fuck? Where's there's a vainness and that's not that's not you. Yeah. He's like you're funny. That's all the fuck we are is funny. And then he kept saying what's your nut. What's your nut? How much do you need to make a year? And I told them exactly how much I needed to make a year. And they did the math. They're like, all right, and get you sponsors for your app, podcast, get you on the road. You can make that. And then I got, and then literally the next week after that, I got fired. And I was like, all right, I took your advice. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but Bill, as much as I listen to Bill and Joe, there's a, there's a part of me that goes, I, I also have to, have my pulse on what I think works sure. for me. We're not sure. all the same thing. Bill shreds his act every year. And, yeah. and and I, when I tour, I get rid of whatever hour you saw on Netflix, I'm not touring with. Right. I do a brand new hour. Right. Uh, and I have a brand new hour ready for you. 
whenever you see me. If you ever see me the following year, it'll be a brand new hour. Yeah. However, um, there are people who have seen that machine story and told their friends, you got to don't watch it online. You got to see them live. It's a great story live. Right. And so I realized that when I first, when I first, that story went viral, I went to uh, the Trash Factory. I was retiring the story. That was the first week that I was like, all right, I'm done telling the machine story. I told her on my special, I'm done. I'm moving past it. The very first show, I got up on stage and it was, and I was like, this is great. Where did you guys, how did you guys hear about me? And they were like, Facebook. And I was like, oh, what what did you see on Facebook? And they're like, the fucking machine story. They're like, you're telling it, right? And I was like, actually, guys, I've retired that story. And they're like, no, 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 no. This is Jersey. <laughs> you're telling it. You're telling it. And I was like, all right, I'll tell it tonight. And then the next night, I said again, I said, where did you guys find me from? And then they're like, they're like, Facebook. Everyone said Facebook. And I was like, yeah. okay. And so I was like, who? Does, do people want to hear the story? And they're like, oh, I brought 15 people who haven't heard the story specifically to hear you tell it. Wow. And 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 I just started listening to people going like, and there's legit comedy fans, legit comedy fans who are Burr fans, Rogan yeah. fans, people listening right now that go, I don't need you to tell it. I don't need you to tell it. And by the way, there's some that are like, I'd rather you not tell it. I just, so, so that's why I do an hour's worth of new material. It's yeah. all new. And then yeah. at the, the last 15 minutes, I tell the machine story. So, so and smart. it's, and now when I go to, when I get on stage, and this was the thing I was going to say, Bill said, is Bill said, you get one opportunity for them to see you for the first time. You get one opportunity for them to see you for the first time. After that, you, you better perform that first time. If you show up fucking drunk or phoning it in, you're never getting them back. They'll never trust you. Yeah. And I went, I did that first year, that first year after the machine went viral, that first full year, I had a brand new hour, the one I ended up doing for Secret Time. I would, I, I was so ready to get past that hour. I had so much material mm -hmm. that I sort of... Uh, uh, the machine. I was so ready to get past that material. It was all older jokes, like fighting a bear, jumping on a plane with yeah. Rachel Ray, finger in the ass, like all these things that I was like, I'm ready to get past. That I already had my new hour, and so I went out for that year with this new hour and just took that advice Bill said. And I go, you only get one opportunity. I'm finally selling tickets. I'm fucking not getting drunk on stage. I'm. I mean, I'll have a drink maybe, yeah. but I'm not getting hammered on stage. Yeah. I'm telling the ending and I'm closing with the machine. I did that for one full year, and then I was like, I got an hour. Let's shoot it on Netflix. Bam! Sold more t sold more tickets the next year, yeah. but this theater tour, when I start that machine story, I wonder if it's because it's in a theater. But I feel very proud of that story, and I, I, my wife. One time, my wife saw me tell it in San Francisco, and she goes, "Hey, if you don't want to tell it, don't fucking tell it. No one wants to see you go through the motions." And I was like, "What?" She was like, "You phoned that in." Wow. And I was like, "Really?" And she goes, "Yeah. If you don't want to tell it, don't fucking tell it." But don't go and tell it and go through the motions. No one's going to respect you. Wow. And I went, wow. And so uh, so this year when I was when I started this theater tour, the first night we were in Portland. And I get done my hour, my hour. And I'm, everyone can tell it's, you know. Yeah. And they start uh, yelling the machine. And I, I thought to myself, throw in some jokes in the middle of it. Punch it up for yourself. Make it fun for you to right. tell. Because... If it's fun for you, it'll be fun for them. And fucking sell. Like, don't fucking half-ass it. This is a goddamn theater. I could just hear Burr in my head. You get one fucking opportunity, dickhead. Right. Just fuck. And so every show, I would say, argue that I have definitely put my all into that sto story. I don't know if I'll tell it again next run through these cities. You know, if you do, the thing is, it's like, you look at the numbers, you go, okay, if I moved, say I moved 2,000 seats over a weekend yeah and then you're moving 4,000 seats now over a week over a night mm -hmm. or two nights yeah you're like these are new people these are people that haven't seen me yeah this isn't just people that have seen me there's people that are brand new so I so it's a very fucking very long goddamn answer is no. uh is yeah I, I tell it but I believe that I told that to I told that to uh Jay Larson I said I think you should tell you should close on that story I told it to Chris Porter I yeah. go you, you turn you some guys are so talented. Chris Porter is so fucking talented. Yeah. He could turn over an hour a year very easily. He just yeah. he's a great writer. Yeah. And and he's and it doesn't it doesn't behoove him to not turn over an hour and write. It's like but there's a part of me that I I, I talked to Chris about this one night in a bathroom getting high in his hotel in Omaha. We were sitting in his bathroom blowing smoke up into the vent. Mm. And I said I as a 
fan of comedy, there's a lot of bits I wish you would do on stage that I think are great that would murder. You said that to, to Chris? Yeah, and he went, really? And I said, yeah. I said, we can't all just be in Bill's race to like be the most prolific guy in the world. Bill's, that's Bill. He's that he's built for that. That's Joe. He, he's, they're built for that. They want that, that there's a part of them that just can't turn it off. Mm -hmm. Some of us can just be really great comics and it's mm -hmm. okay to tell a story that people have heard. If they want to hear it, yeah. you're a performer also. So the next night, Chris goes up and he does a set, gets the check drop, and he kind of was like, you know what? I had a conversation with Bert last night. Is there any jokes you guys want to hear? And someone goes, cardboard, cardboard. Yeah. And he was like, what? He's like, that. And he was like, I kind of forgot how that went. And he's, or Taco Bell, Taco Bell, Taco Bell. And he was like, oh, okay. And he, it was, it was like, it was like next level giving his fans what he needed. I don't know if he's still doing it, but giving his fans what they wanted at a yeah. time when he would just be burning a new joke. And so for yeah. the check spot, he did a bunch of stuff that was like almost requests of like what was really good stuff of his in the past. Right. Closed on something new and he was like, it's not a bad way to do it. There's a lot of people who are like, I gotta be honest with you, I think Ron White's amazing. Yeah. If I bought a ticket to him and he started Tater Salad, I'd lose my yeah. fucking shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, with Just... Chappelle, I don't want that with Chappelle. I don't want that with Bill. Hmm. I don't want what that with Joe. There, there's... But there's certain guys I want that from where I go, yeah. oh, please say he's going to do the bit. Yeah. There's certain guys I think where I guess you just watch, you want to watch them do anything. Anything. I, I think stories are different too. Stories yeah. are like songs. Yeah. Like a good story. Yeah. You can always change it up and weave it differently the next time. I mean, Ali Sadiq, I want to hear Mexicans Got On Boots. Mm -hmm. I love that story. Mm -hmm. Joey Diaz has stories about snorting coke with Lawrence Taylor. Yeah. And you're like, I want to hear, like there's- yeah. I think it's the difference with Attell. See, the problem is with Attell, I would, I would listen to him do old jokes in a heartbeat. Yeah, like his just to, yeah. to hear him do his cadence. Yeah, they're they're, they're iconic. I mean, but uh, but with Attell, same as Burr, I definitely want to see what new stuff he wrote. Yeah. Like I'd rather see the new stuff. Yeah, you yeah, know? I feel that way as a comic too. I mean, when you talking about that story, so did you feel you felt it? You felt it phoned in in San Francisco when your wife called no, called, called you on it. I didn't think so. See, okay. Tell me what your thoughts are on this. I just did Philly and I was in there for, I did, I did, I did, they were scheduled to do five shows. They added two other shows, which Ooh. for me, that's never happened for, for, for me. What's the I felt price? like. What's the ticket price? 22, I okay, think. Okay. 20, yeah. Sorry. By the way, there's a math to this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Like, there's a Tom Segura, a there's a Tom Segura there. math to this. Yeah. <laughs> Two other, so I did like a 5 p.m. show. <laughs> I can tell you right now, guys, Drew's going to be at the Troc next time he comes through Philly. <laughs> He's going to do six shows at the Troc. I can already tell you the math. <laughs> I did. So I did. So that, that's never that's never happened for me. But it's just it, it, it was it was so amazing to get to do. I did three shows in a night, which if you've done three shows in a night before, right? Yes. That third show, you're like, did I do this? Joe, did I do this? Have you guys heard this one? Especially you, if you're drinking. Yeah. <laughs> I've told the joke twice. Yeah. I've told the joke I twice did, on the yeah. show. <laughs> and then in the middle, I said, in the middle, I went, have I told this? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy goes, yeah, but just get, get through it. Dude, there is nothing more quiet that happens than when you start to set up a joke. I set, I set up a joke for that third show. I set up a joke for the, for the third show. And I was like, I set it up. I was like, and then, and then, nope, you heard this. And then went right into another, <laughs> like, it was that quick. I was like, I think you, no, okay. Um, but anyway, so I did the three shows on, on Saturday. And then I had one last show on Sunday. My manager said, listen, Netflix wants you to try and get just, just try to stay to your script for right. And just say to the, do the jokes. They just have to see the jokes. And then if you want to maybe try and weave in some, some, something at a different time, that's to be discussed in cre creative later. I did the show on uh, that Sunday where I was like, all right, here's where I think the strongest hour is. I'm going to keep the energy up from each one. So there's no silences. So no one has the opportunity to shout for me to, for me to play. I was very passionate about it i was very um focused and 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 i got done with the show i'm whatever i'm on my instagram or whatever just about to post like another thing and some girl had left like a comment and was like yeah maybe seven shows wouldn't have been the best thing for you i felt 
like because for I, for me I left pretty disappointed and felt like you felt like you phoned it in. I'm t- I I'm telling you Bert I've ne- I've never had I've never had I've never had a night where I could not sl- I just could not sleep. I cu- I was I just I, I kept justifying and rerun, re, rerunning it in my head. I was like, oh, fuck that. Like, she has no idea. Like, I was like, well, maybe she has a point. But then I was like, no, I've never phoned anything in. Ever, it's, ever. It's, it's I, Trust me, I've seen people phone it in. I've seen yeah. people phone it in. And even then you're like, oh, that's what that's what they do. I, I Did you go into her Instagram? Did you check I out messaged, her pictures? I, I messaged her. I spent that night concocting the did message. Did she have a cat or a dog? I was like, yeah, I, yeah, right. I, well, no, what it was is I messaged her and I was like, hey, I saw your comment. I would love to be, I was very service representative. I was like, you know, I we got your feedback, uh, you know, love to give you a travel voucher for, you know, whatever. <laughs> I said, I would love, you know, I, I would love to be, I would love to hear what it is the criticism is about. I'm always open to criticism. And then she was just like, I mean, it just, I don't know. Uh, you just, you just kind of felt like you did. I, I, from what I've seen online, you've done a lot of things that were with the audience and off the cuff and things like that. Oh, and you know what? Okay, that's that's a different. So tell no, me, that's then okay. fuck her. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Oh, that's there's okay. a bigger there's a bigger picture that you're working at. She can go fuck herself. That's the way I felt, and I started to type that. I like I typed that whole like there's this whole thing you don't understand. Netflix needs like I'm talking to her. <laughs> this is a chicken Philly, <laughs> and I'm like no no no. You do you, they, like you need like the tight. <laughs> yeah no it's that and that her, is she that it's it's it's. It's the big dick kiss, curse of the big dick. So if you have a big dick, I guess I don't have one. But if you have a big Mm -hmm. dick, you can't get it in all inside a vagina. Mm -hmm. So it's not real fun, I guess, to have a big dick. Mm -hmm. Like some people, you can barely fuck. Yeah. And so, like, uh, my wife didn't tell me this. By the way, I I had this information for the message. Our friend. <laughs> Dear ma'am, this is the curse of the big dick. Some guys have. A big, <laughs> the big I don't, dick. but. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but our friend, our friend had a husband with a big dick, and we're like, whoa, like he's got a massive dick. And she said, yeah, it's kind of painful, and it's not. I mean, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's not enjoyable for him because mm-hmm. he can't get it all in. And we're like, who wants a big dick then? Like. You know, I'd rather have my size. And I can get it all in and then some. <laughs> I, I got room to work with. Dicks. <laughs> I could put another dick in there easy. I could put mine and some of her husband's dick in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could put a plethora of dicks in there. I wish I had two more. <laughs> so, <laughs> with a gun and a camera like a throat scope. <laughs> so, but. But you you have to do you have to do those sets. They you've you've put the sets out online of of people calling things out and it being bu- brilliant in the moment of you fucking around and it being brilliant in the moment, and it, that does sell tickets. Mm-hmm. It's like Ian Bag Ian Bag in the moment yeah, yeah, yeah. is the fucking genius. These yeah. I've never seen someone work quicker on their feet. Mm-hmm. I could sit and watch it for hours, mm-hmm. and. I think maybe one of his maybe his first special. I want to say I'm guessing, or maybe his first TV spot. He just did material, and you're like, oh, I want to see the brilliance. And then on his next special, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm fucking up specials, but mm-hmm. I, I saw one special where it was all him doing crowd work, and it was fucking just like it was. Yeah, it was such a great special. I texted him, and was like, dude, that special is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. But he, it's it's one of those things where it's like you got you got to you got to listen to her a little bit because. Those people saw the you fucking around on stage, and they want to be in the moment. Right, it's really hard, man. I was I was a I was a guy who would use the audience. It's a trick a little bit, but you'd use the audience to um to get to your next bit. Sure. And it was I, I did a lot when I was on the road. I, you ever you know da da da, and then oh that's oh that's, I, I just came up with this on the fly. Whoa, yeah, you had that story. I I have this story. Yeah, and and then when I did um. When I started getting ready for my my Showtime special, I was like, "All right, got to get rid of the fucking bullshit crowd work, yeah. and you just got to do the material, yeah. and it's got to be it's got to be one whole sentence, mm-hmm. you know." And I th- I think telling the machine story got me comfortable with that. Interesting, but but for me, I wasn't doing genuine crowd work. I was doing bullshit crowd work. Mm. Like I 
I th- I would fuck around a little bit, mm-hmm. and then if it went well, I would uh, I would then expand off that, and I'd go to that guy. I'd use that guy as a. But you yeah. can't do that when you do a special. You you got to. It's got to be the words. It's got to yeah. be the things you think and the ideas you have. Yeah. Unless you're in, or unless you know, unless you can incorporate it into an into a bit mm-hmm. that. You know, like I, I just saw one of you. I don't know when this was. All I know is I was looking at your, uh, your stage stuff, and it was. I think it was a two camera shoot, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Fucking impressive!" Mm-hmm. Can I tell you, one time I said to Tom, I was saying, <laughs> "This is when you don't know you're in different places and your career is another person, mm-hmm. and then it just comes up organically, and you go, huh? I go, I was getting ready for my Showtime special, and I said, "Yeah, I've been taping every set." I tape it uh, every set and then I download it and I cut it into clips and I go through each bit by bit and I try to figure out and he goes, where do you place the camera? I go on a table in the back and he goes, you have free tables in the back? And I went, you don't? (laughs) He goes, I couldn't. I don't know where I'd place a camera in my rooms. And I went, wow. I was like, motherfucker. I go, yeah, I always find a free table. There's a few actually. I, You'd be shocked. I could have set up yeah. 19 cameras in the back. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah. And, but it, there's, there's, someone yelled out banana out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. That's a word I just, I, they not- notoriously, I cannot say as, oh, far really? as, as far as people who know my, know me, I can't say that word. And so, 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 and, so, but that, that is funny. And I didn't understand why she yelled it out, but then your reaction of trying to say it and then going, fuck you. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was fucking hilarious. Th- yeah. Is, th- you know, th- th- it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's yeah. fun. I yeah. mean, when I saw that clip, I was, I was, I wasn't even paying attention. I think I was just looking at some of your clips yeah. of, of interaction. I was just looking at your camera setup. I was like, this is set up really nice. These are actually really cropped great. Like, <laughs> I was like, he really has the same shot from a different, like, literally the same shot from a different angle. Mm-hmm. And I was like, the audio is good. And then, and, I, and, she, and I'm just watching it. She goes, banana. I was like, the fuck's this cunt yelling banana for? Yeah. And then your reaction was uh, hilarious. I was like, oh wow. And I laughed. Mm-hmm. So I can understand that some woman think comes to a show and thinks, "Where's the fucking? Where's the stunt work that I've been seeing online?" Yeah, yeah, and so so for me, it was also just like I I just took it crazy personally, you know, because that's that's that was my, that's my material, you know. You didn't you're selling me the what it is that I've written is yeah. not. You know, and I and I I always want to make sure, like, yeah, cr- crowd work can always be the next level thing because that's things that happen in that moment and it's specific to to, to that audience. But you know, it's like tough I, to do a special with crowd work. You know, yeah. uh, Paula Poundstone did it brilliantly. Mm-hmm. Um, Ian does it brilliantly. There's guys that are really good at it. Jay, uh, dude, Jay Okerson. Yeah, Have yeah. Never seen him do crowd. I've work? never seen him do do, do crowd work. It's, but I mean, I, I would. I would argue that is mostly what he does when he does stand up now. Really? That guy goes up with nothing in mind and I'm telling you you are pissing on the back of the wall tr- cuz you don't want to leave the room. You're literally holding it in going this is the funniest thing I've ever. I've seen him do crowd work I where I'm blown the fuck away. I would have never pe- pegged that. I just watch I just watched his uh you know his Netflix was it, he did de- degenerates he, with, he does material with too stuff, but like I but I think he comes up with his material by doing crowd work. Wow. I think that's how he writes is it's get up on stage and fuck process. around. But he's I mean he's a great comic. He can just yeah. do straight stand up but man when you he did a show for CISO called the Crowd Work show mm-hmm. and I was in the audience. I he he'd, he'd be on stage and then I'd be in the audience with a mic doing like when he wanted to talk to someone I'd give them the mic and then I'd comment back and forth dude his crowd work is so much quicker than anything I've ever done really I ended up doing crowd work on the show and and being like I, I can't hold a fucking key I, I wow. couldn't hold a fucking candle to that guy now is Jay, Jay Jay's East Coast yeah yeah New York yeah I would love to catch, catch, catch a show of his sometime just to see Dude, do you ever go out to New York? Yeah, you should yeah. go do the bonfire, do his show. Have you ever done? No, no. Where's, you where's, got to do his show. Where's it at? Uh, it's. Uh, let me know if you're in New York. I'll text Jay and yeah. Dan yeah. and uh, and Christine. But they, it's uh, the funnest fucking radio show to do. It's in Sirius XM. It's on Comedy Central Radio, mm. and it is the funnest fucking radio show you'll ever do. I mean, I'm right now. I'm not even joking. I kind of want to fly out early 
for my Jersey date yeah. and go in and do it. It's that much fucking fun. Like wow. I literally make a point to go do that show. The last time I was doing press, I was doing press, I think for, I don't know, probably for my Netflix special. Yeah. I did the bonfire every single night. Every single night I did radio. I did in the morning and every single night I was at the bonfire. It is fucking so I much fucking fun. That's, that's, that's his show? That's Jay's? He's got a couple. He's got, uh, he's got Legion of Skanks, which right. is a gr- Right. Which is a fucking great show to do, right. obviously. Those guys are all so close. But and then Bonfire. Bonfire is his radio show. Jay's and, just such a good improver. And he does um who 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 else is on it with Dan him? Dan Soder and Dan Jay. Do- yeah. And uh it is I mean like I mean obviously, you know, Jim and Sam's fucking amazing. Yeah. Uh, Bennington's fucking amazing. Yeah. But there's a because it's later in the night, I can drink and get cut loose drunk. Right. And get high and just howl laughing i've told stories on that podcast mm. or on that radio show that immediately could be bits immediately could be because wow. they punch up your jokes so much yeah like they i told a story about that i've t- i ended up telling the other night about being on riding motorcycles in vietnam yeah and i told it for the first time in that room and i i will never tell it better than that one time i told yeah. it in that fucking room they're fucking amazing when you do new new jokes into like how do you, how, what's your process for like a newer joke? Like, are you taking that on the road with you? Are you squeezing it in and then in, in, in the middle for you know a lot of these uh, theaters and stuff? Um, I will. I I I will probably um, cram it in in between things. Yeah. Um, I'll slide it in. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll <laughs> I'll open with it. Because I feel like the energy, the nervous energy I have will help sell it. Mm. Like if I open with it, I open with a story in Tampa. And I just, but, and I, but I write a lot on stage. So it's yeah. not it's not super foreign for me. What my biggest problem in stand-up, honestly, is getting into a bit. And then the, almost like, you know, spinning plates. And then letting it sit and be stagnant almost. Really? Like, yeah. And like going like, it, it's okay. It works. And then not realizing, oh, it could be a lot better. I have this. I travel with this guy. One of the guys I travel with is a guy named Shane Torres. Fucking yeah, amazing. Yeah, Shane is really good at giving you notes, not giving you punch ups, but giving you notes that you didn't realize you needed. Like I this joke, I this joke. It's a uh, the the whole joke is is it's just three words. It's three words. I don't want to say the words because uh, 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 can you edit the I'll edit this part out? Um, the the joke, the three words of the joke is. It was the only thing that I hung my hat on was this, that three words together made me laugh harder than anything in the world. And so I thought, I bet that'll work on stage. So I took it on stage. I kind of told the story a little bit all over the map, but I told the three words that I just told you and it killed. And I went in in the story and I went, that's the story. Just like the, it's his arm. That's the story for me. Those three words. And so I start working it backwards and, and, trying to like figure out the front part of it. How did I get to this? And yeah. how can I make this part funny? And one of the things I did was um, my wife makes lists and I said, I, I'm going to make the list. And so I just was doing the list. And this is my problem in stand up is I, maybe I don't even see it. Sometimes I'm doing the list and I'm it's, and it's just a list. It's not, there's nothing funny to it. It's yeah. just a list. And then uh, Shane Torres, Shane in the, in the bus goes, I said, yeah, bit's kind of like, floundering it takes forever for me to get to the part of the joke that i like and he goes yeah is there a reason you're not putting jokes on that list and i went <laughs> i go what and he goes well, it'd be a lot funny if there were jokes on there right and i was like oh yeah that Jesus. would be funny and i was like yeah i wasn't even thinking of that i was yeah. just doing this wake up at 5 45 breakfast at seven that is at seven da, 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 seven and then maybe i was like jokes. oh i could maybe put jokes on that list and then yeah. that would be funny also <laughs> yeah i i that is my biggest problem I, dude really i'm i'm the laziest fucking writer when you do you feel like when you're on stage and you come up with something or something happens on stage that you're writing when you're writing on stage do you not you, you don't feel like that's cheating at all a little bit because you didn't take it from like the idea on the notebook or whatever or oh, you no, just no, feel that no. no. dude uh, any way to skin that fucking yeah. cat yeah dude i there was a one joke where i was a crowd work thing and uh and uh, I, I can't give it away. I can't give it away because it's in my hour right now. But there was a crowd work thing. This woman's reply was fucking better than the I. The woman's answer was better than the thing I had in my brain, and wow. I just took it. 
Really? I was like, well, that's mine now. Oh, I feel so like a loss of an in, 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 in integrity almost. No, no, fuck no. Really? Dude, if you, if you said to a guy, like, I'm trying to think of an example. That That's a pure example. But like... Uh, if you if you have a crowd work moment and the thing that happens in the room mm-hmm. is better than the the bit you were having, not and I'm not saying like like I yeah. remember one time there was this Puerto Rican guy who said something. I used to have this thing about uh, what's the best way to eat pussy, and it was an aggressive question. This was back when I was younger and I was trying to be aggressive, and there was this Puerto Rican guy that gave me an answer that was so fucking funny. He was like, "Mira, you pull your lips right by her clit and you just go," and I was, was I've been doing stand up for maybe a year oh wow and, and i was like dude that's funny and i i used to tell that i said i used to go it was so funny in the moment because i it was so bizarre to me yeah that i would then tell i was talking to this cute puerto rican guy and he told me this right right, right. but then i even punch it up i go this is a very old joke by the way i go um a very old joke that i just put in my special this is a 20 year old joke that just got into my special uh this last special, not the not the Puerto Rican right, guy part, right, right. but back in the day, I'd go. I was talking to this Puerto Rican guy. He's like, "You want to really know how to please your bitch?" I was like, "Don't call her bitch." He's like, "No, no, no, that's not it." Yeah. And then I'd tell his part to get to my joke. In my head is, I'm, I've always been like, if it, if it makes that room laugh, then it's it's fair game. If wow. if I like, obviously, if someone like gives me a setup punch in the room, yeah, and I take that, I'm not doing that. Right, right, right. But right, if there's right. a thing that happens in the room in this in the moment. Yeah. That's my room. I deserve anything that goes on in that room. That's right. why I believe a bit. Right. Interesting. But Interesting. I've just, I, I think, I think, I think I, I, I've, I've, I've been wanting to, you know, hear just different people's opinions on it just because I always feel so like if I didn't come up with it, then I'm like, ah, I can't, well, I, 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 I can't. But I, I don't think like, I don't think I, I came up with the premises. I came up with the punchlines, sure, but I'm sure. saying like, I'm saying like, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of an exact example of how that would work. Like if I, I wouldn't go, uh, you know what women hate, and then the guy gives me a punchline that's ten times better than mine, I wouldn't take that. Sure, I wouldn't be like, ooh, that's mine now. Sure, sure. I was like, because that guy might want to be a comic. Sure, sure. Um, and there's no and there's no judgment otherwise. But I yeah. just mean like for me, I feel so, maybe it's just a sense of pride for my own self. I have to be like, oh, why didn't I come 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 up with that? Oh that's yeah. That's why I always. I think write I'm, to, I think yeah. I might be thinking of a different way of saying that. Like, I meant like, I wish I could tell you the exact hit hit clear this out this is like so inside yeah. baseball so uh i never mind don't i can't i i i'll tell you after the thing yeah, yeah. of the thing is say i said to someone that i'm trying to think of the, the exact example but say i said to someone um What do you do for a living? And then the guy tells me a, a job that I wasn't expecting, and I have a great punchline to follow that. Yeah. Then I I don't have a problem going. I was talking to a guy who did this for a living, right, right, and then right. say my own punchline. I would never right. use an audience member's sure. punchline. Sure, sure. But if someone says something, like if you go, uh, and and I I couldn't do it like if the if the thing's funnier than I would have thought of. Yeah. Meaning like like I remember one time, uh, like if I said what what. What's the, what song did you lose your virginity to? And the guy has a punchline that's better than mine. Yeah. I wouldn't go, oh, I'm stealing that. Yeah. That's mine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if I, if a guy said, if a guy asked me a question and my answer is funny, I, that's my punchline. Right. I think that's what I meant sure, to say. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's, that's, I wouldn't, that's what I meant. I wouldn't go into like. Just milk the audience to write my material for me. Sure. Of course. But, uh, but there's one thing I'll tell you after the thing there, I had a question about a place someone was at at some point. Yeah. She said it, and my punchline was fucking hilarious. Mm. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to just switch. In yeah, that story, yeah. I'm going to switch this thing to that yeah, yeah, instead yeah, of yeah. what it initially was. Because my response to her in that moment was funnier. It's really yeah. hard to explain. It's really hard to explain. <laughs> this, no, no, I, I understand yeah. 100, 100%. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think... I think anything that happens in a room, if you have an improv, that like Big J, mm-hmm. if Big J is talking to someone and he's telling a story and the guy says something that piques J, that J has a, a fucking hilarious tag on to mm-hmm. or, or can elaborate on that one thing, yeah. I definitely think that's fair game. That's yeah. all you. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's it's also a different way of thinking. It would be like, you know, there's nothing wrong if I like if I said to you, what would be the worst job to have if you were, that's probably something you already thought of, mm-hmm. if you had a stutter 
and you said something fucking hilarious, then that's your bit. Sure, that's, sure, I didn't sure. write that. I didn't sure, go, sure. ah, no, that's mine. Sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. But why, how do you, how do you go about, what's, what's your writing process? Do you write pen to paper all the day? I, uh, a lot of times I end up just end up, I end up trying to just write a lot of the things that are, that are, that are frustrating. I mean, just about, you know, about, about anything, you yeah. know? So it's not like, you know, I, I just, I always, I, I feel like because the way I started was you sit down and, and, and you write mm-hmm. and then that goes on stage and then you edit based on that set and then whatever. But some of these guys, you know, I've seen, they just get so veteran, and so comfortable that they can just, you know, they have the idea or like a bullet point or like Bill will take a bullet point and then, you know, just go on stage. Have and you then, ever hung out with Bill? No, no. Uh, I mean, I've hung out with you, you my can, one story. My one story with Bill Burr is he did a show at he did a show at Flappers. But um, the manager ma- ma- made me help sell his CDs, which I think is the most humiliating thing that's ever happened to me. Especially because he's just such 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 an icon. Um, and I watched. I got done with my shift early so I could go in to watch his set. It's straight sixty minutes of just. I mean, there's not, there's just, it's just yeah. fire. And I, I, he's sitting there leaning on the counter afterwards and I'm, we're, I'm selling this or whatever in between the, you know, people coming up to get CDs or whatever. He's leaning on the counter and I was just, he, I was just like, you know, wow, just great. I mean, just, I mean, this is so long ago for me. I was just like this, that was just incredible. And he was like, yeah, there was something a little weird in like the middle there, that part, like right there. And I was like, oh, I didn't think that, no, I didn't think that part was weird at all. And he was like, nah. No, it's just it's just not it. And then only later did I find out that like that's a thing that you can actually think. I would think if he if I were to ever have a set like he had that set that night, yeah. I would have retired just comedy in my mindset at that at that time. Yeah. But now a little bit older and doing doing a little bit more shows and things, you can have people tell you all day long that it's that it was just amazing or that it was just it went so well. But to you, you're just like, "Eh, you that have one to, you part you have to know it yeah that one part is just not so yeah. that that's my that's my you know that's my one story with, that's my one story with, with, yeah with, with, when you with, hang out with bill. bill you know how he writes if you spend any amount of time with bill yeah. he cannot turn his fucking brain off yeah. he is an incessant writer i mean yeah. everything um I figure I remembered the uh, example of that I wanted to tell you of the yeah. time something happened in the audience that I wrote a joke for yeah that turned into a, a bit have you ever done Jeremiah's um, Jeremiah Jeremiah has a stand up on the spot at the com- comedy, at the comedy store, store up no, in the belly room no. it's fucking amazing so people yell things out and then you write jokes off of it that's great and so um, and I was doing a bit and I said what do you guys want to talk about next and someone said Hit- Hitler and I was like and then I made a joke about Hitler mm-hmm. and then I and then someone said how about Anne Frank and uh, the joke I said which ended up going on some this some this is not happening was i used to think Anne frank and helen keller were the same person and oh the person laughed and i didn't know that was a joke so like in those instances i think that that is completely yours like yeah. you, the i would i would have never thought to, to, of yeah. that as a joke yeah uh, you know but it got a laugh yeah and then and then i got off stage and rogan was like you got to tell that as a bit i was like seriously yeah he's like dude that's fucking hilarious i was like i didn't know it a lot of times a lot of that happened to me where i go i didn't know that was funny yeah and they're like oh my god that's fucking hilarious and you're like oh I yeah didn't see that at all i feel like if something's too easy it's like how hard i mean I, I, if someone says something so funny and you you got to it so easy it's like well how you know how but i guess you just have to oh, accept I, that as the great sometimes of- sometimes you can you can um you can come up with a bit and not realize you're doing someone else's bit. Like if, when you write on, that's the danger of writing on stage yeah. is you're in the moment. One time I was in Columbus and I said something. I've, I've, I've said, I don't, I don't love my wife. I need her. I need my wife. And immediately I just, I had this like, I pictured the whole bit in my head and I was like, this is fucking gold. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm starting into the bit and I went, whoa, hold on. I think I'm doing a Patrice O'Neill bit right now oh, wow. <laughs> about how his girlfriend doesn't realize she needs him. Like his his Yorkies knew they needed him. If they wanted to get on the couch, they needed him. They go look at him and go, and he goes, "No, look at my my bitch gets on the couch like like she doesn't need me." Yeah. I mean, I, I know, but she doesn't need me. Yeah. These dogs know they need me, and it was like, and I was as I, I just started it. I said, "I think that's a Patrice O'Neill bit." And this guy in the front row goes. 
I, yeah, I think so too. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but if you call yourself on it in the moment, if you're honest, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think one of the things that I'm 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 grateful for only later was when I was when I was earlier on and for whatever my injury and stuff because of my my because of my stutter, the amount of words that I had to use were so few like word economy was just was just so important so I remember I used to write with an ellipsis I used to write the first part of the joke and then dot 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 and then whatever those last two or th- th- three words were and it would just be joke 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 like, joke, give me an joke, example. joke um I don't I like an example would be I would write like um uh I uh, I'm scared to have kids because I I, I I don't want them to be born with what I have, a, a, a ellipsis, a, a, a disappointed father. <laughs> so it would just get me into this structure of just be like, here's the target assumption. You can turn it right after the ellipsis. So it was, a, it, it was this own little way of teaching me structure and that one way could something could be said in a different way after the fact or that there's a target assumption in something and you can and you can change it. And hopefully it's just become, you know, built into the, the 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 process now as far as just you know applying it and so much not having to work on or rely on 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 the the you know the stutter of it it's just my mind my brain just works that way now but see the thing that you have that I, that I, what that I was noticing is you have an ability because of your stutter to keep people very present mm. um they don't they're not they're not two steps ahead of you they're exactly in pace with you interesting so yeah cuz I, I was like when you tell a joke, you're so focused mm-hmm. on what word you're going to say mm-hmm. that I am there. Like I would tell, I would do a setup joke, a setup punch, and people would guess the punch lines. Mm-hmm. I remember that happened in, in Amarillo one time. I was doing a joke and I said, uh, um, I said some, uh, the joke was a, a girl shot me down, so I threw gum in her hair. And, uh, and, but a guy guessed the punchline before mm-hmm. I did it. And I was like, well, then that's gone. Yeah. But when you tell a joke, I am I think you're so intently listening to what you're saying or what you're trying to say mm-hmm. that you're not thinking about the punchline. It's a really great delivery mechanism. Sad, I mean, yeah, no. sadly, you had to go undergo an injury, but yeah. it's, you're very present for your talking. It's interesting. interesting. That is weird. Yeah. The, I, thing, the thing that I do now is I watched... Uh, I mean, I've known Bill for forever, and not to harp on Bill Burr, but he just is really one of the best doing it in our business yeah. right now. And um, I knew him when he was clean. I knew him when he went like more to like where he is now, and I've seen him grow. One of the things he does that's fucking amazing is he challenges himself every special to do something a little more or different than he did before. Like right. for instance, act outs. Right. Like, he did this act out that had me fucking doubled over. Right. Where he talks to a. a he adopts two sons. You ever see that joke? Which one was that? Was that in? In black that and white sounds... special, I think. Yes. He yeah. adopts two sons. One yeah. one works in a garment factory and one's a soldier. Yeah. And and he's leans over and's talking to his son, the one in the garment factory. And he's like, Yeah. He says, you know, there's different rules for you guys. He scares me too. Look at his fucking eye. Like yeah. if that's not that's not typically a burr thing. Sure. And he just challenged himself to do something different. Yeah. That's the coolest thing I think you can do in stand up. Yeah. One of the biggest things people get caught up in is like you ever seen someone special who you love and then you look at it and you're like, That's the same jokes kind of reworked. Yeah. He's doing the same yeah. thing he just did the Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's, like it's like Stan Stanhope always complains about it and he goes he goes, I, I, I heard him on a podcast with Tom Rhodes. I wrote all my jokes already. I wrote them all. What am I gonna do? Another abortion joke? What am wow. I gonna do? This? So that's why Stanhope takes big chunks off. When he gets wow. done a tour, does a special, takes a big chunk off and just is like, well, let's, let's fucking, let's get deep. Yeah. He's, dude, Stanhope is one of, the, he's probably one of the most prolific writers out there too. I called him up one time. This is what, this is what changed my fucking game. Really? I called him one night. I go, what are you doing? He's like, uh, I'm having a grapefruit and vodka, thinking of some goofs. I said, what? He was just, Got a notebook, think of some goofs, something silly. I said, well, "What do you mean?" He goes, "I'm trying to write a knock knock joke. Like I figure I'm I'm as good at those as those guys that wrote those. I mean, right?" He's like, "I should be able to write a knock knock joke, so I'm working on knock knock jokes." 
And I went really, almost like as an exercise, like the way that a boxer would chase a chicken. Yeah. You know, Stan yeah. Hope was writing knock knock jokes. And I became fucking obsessed. I became obsessed with going, hold on. I can do, I can do a long story. I can do a, a machine story. I can do shorter stories. I can uh, tell unique stories. But can I, can I take a joke structure and apply my, one of my stories into a joke structure? Yeah. And I fucking, it was the funnest joke I've ever, I say, I always say wrote because I wrote it, but yeah. it happened to me. Yeah. And as it happened to me, I realized uh, the first time I told it was in Lexington and I realized this this is this is what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And I fucking it's the p- proudest joke I've ever br- had in my life. I'm, I'm my favorite joke I've ever written and uh, I'm torn with it now and it's just really? it basically is guy walks into a bar. Guy walks into a bar. That's it. That's all it is. And and I, because I I'm, I I'm obsessed with Norm Macdonald. Yeah. Norm Macdonald can tell a story and tell a joke and and it take you take you through it mm-hmm. and it's just and you're there yeah and so i was obsessed with that and i looked at the way stanhope was approaching his next hour mm-hmm. and going like i could do this i could do that dude stanhope's next hour is fucking amazing you, you seen i saw it? yeah i saw it at the store wow. um but i was like yeah you got to challenge yourself you got to take you can't just do like like Say you're good at one thing. Yeah. You can't just go, all right, I'm good at that thing. Let's do it. We got it. Yeah. You got to go, oh, I'm good at that. I wonder how I could do an act out. I wonder if I have an act out ability. I wonder if I have an ability to take an older type of joke. I wonder if I should, I'm going to try to write a a longer form story. Right. I'm going to try all these different, uh, these different kind of uh, abilities out that you see people great at. I'm I'm not going to go out and and bring a guitar on stage probably or something like that. But, but why not, why not? Get out of your comfort zone. Bill does that so fucking great. Yeah. And Bill does that in Stanhope. Just get out of your comfort zone. Do yeah. something a little different. You know, maybe it's like Gary. You are you following Gary Goldman's I am. notes for comedy? I am. I am. Fucking, he's dude. He's a perfect example. He's so he's so good, man. Dude, he goes. He does. No, I mean, knowing Gary the way I know Gary, mm-hmm. his stand up was never what that. States abbreviation was that straight abbreviation is a straight up story. It is yeah. a, it's a, it's a it's a history class. Yeah, it's a five minute story that he told beginning to end on fucking network. Yeah. No one does that. No one yeah. goes up, stands and delivers. Yeah, I watched a documentary the other day, dude. That's not that's J- Gary going out of his comfort zone and challenging himself. That's fucking next level, dude. And, and, and not and enough guys off. are doing that. Yeah, and it paid off. Well, yeah, I mean, and Gary's just such a. He's such a good writer, too. Dude, he's an amazing writer. By the way, his dirty stuff is like, no, I've known Gary for a very long time. I've known mm-hmm. him for 20 years. I've been very close with him for mm-hmm. a very long time before he moved to New York. And just talking to him, I mean, he had a joke about uh, about the first time he blew a load that made me laugh so fucking hard. <laughs> and he was like, I never could, I'm not going to ever, I'm never going to. Yeah. Gonna. But it was, he made, we were at a coffee bean and I was spitting coffee out of my nose laughing and he was not trying to make me laugh. I was talking about how upset or afraid I was when I did it, when the first time that happened. And he was like, that's interesting. And then he told me his story and I was howling fucking laughing. And I was like, he's like, I could never tell it on stage. What is it? What is it? (laughs) He goes, he goes, uh, I told him, I said, yeah, man, I was, I was terrified, man. I just sat in my bed and I thought I broke it. Like I thought. I broke it. And he was like, mm, I, I did a uh, very unwise thing. I said, what's that? He goes, I consulted my mother. <laughs> oh, man. I go, you what? He goes, I consulted my mother. <laughs> I went in and... I can hear that in, in, yeah. in, in his voice, too. And I fucking was... I go, you told your mom? Oh, yeah. I said, Mom, something's come out of my penis. I was playing with it. And I was like... I was a fucking hell. I go, Gary, please talk about that on stage. He goes, no, it's not what I talk about. Yeah. So weird, man. Yeah. I, I, well, when you said that he had had, had said that, it yeah. felt weird just yeah. because, you know, he talks about. I have a about- bit where I talk about, uh, about the first time blew a load in my new hour. And there's a part that's kind of similar to that, but it's it's not the same. It's not his It's not his thing, but it's, and I still giggle when I think about Gary. I consulted my mother. Yeah. Yep. But uh, yeah, it, there's so many people doing it right. And then there's so many people not change. I don't know. I don't, you, you don't need to. It's like no one wanted to see Mitch Hedberg 
do something different than what he did. Sure. You know? Sure. You do something great, like sure. you tell. Sure. Stay in your fucking... Are we, t- are, we t- are we talking about like Ron White? Like Ron White delivers Dude. that same... You know, he's such a great st- storyteller and he's got so many gr- great ones. It's 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 what... I, when we started this podcast, is what I was talking about is it's really interesting. I watched Larry the Cable Guy one night and uh, me and Nate Bargatze and Ari Shafir watched uh, Larry the Cable Guy in Nashville at the Ryman. And we were blown away about how dialed in his audience is to him. Yeah. You know? And you get that way a little bit. Like, I think when you find your fans, how they're dialed into the thing. I, I can't remember what Larry's bit was. I don't even know if it was a bit. But he said something about climate control. And the fucking place went nuts. I don't know about you. But I believe in the Lord or something. I don't. I'm, I'm re- miss fucking right, it up. Right, 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 right. But he's, and he goes, I don't believe. I think the Lord picks the temperatures. And the place went fucking bananas. And Ari and I were like, it was a game changer, dude. Being friends with Ari and being a comic, Ari is one of the most literally, literally pick apart comedy guy in the world. Yeah. And I, I, I said that is that's the goal. Yeah. Is to get get it to the place where you go out and you hold up a shot. Like if I hold up a shot and do a shot. Dude, that's better than them. And people lose their fucking minds. But it's like finding your fans. And when you started, you literally were like Rogan when he was doing Fear Factor. Where it's like everyone came out like, I didn't even know you did stand up. Yeah. And and Rogan's like, no, I'm a much better stand up than I am host or actor. This is what my ta- my real talent is. Yeah. But that's what you had to go through. A little bit. I guess so. I mean, I just, I mean, I, it's still coming to a place where I'm trying to find, having the fans f- 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 find, find you or uh, just having them find what it is that you, you you do and be excited for it and use it in that in that in that in that algorithm i mean like you know i think bill burr is is much like he's he is like a musician where you want to hear him not, i don't even have to hear him do the hits i want to hear him do just 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 anything yeah so that's i think the goal is just like working whatever your pov is into your formula maybe for your voice and then doing something that he does which is like cha- 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 challenging himself to do something that he didn't before so he doesn't get stale and so he gets that 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 level of growth it's always yeah, you don't want to do a total departure from your act no but those little hints of nuance of, t- of taking taking what you do and i just think it's fascinating i yeah. love when i see comics doing that yeah that's why i love Ari's storytelling show is because yeah. it's really comics getting i mean i i tell stories so it's more of my strength mm-hmm. but watching comics who don't necessarily tell stories tell a story like mark norman told a story i watched him tell a story really it was fucking amazing because he's such a great j- 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 fucking writer. joke writer yeah so fucking great yeah and he and it was like I was like, wow! I really wish, I really wish that I had your ability to write jokes that quick. Yeah, because he would. Sp- his story was sprinkled with fucking jokes. Yeah, and you're just sitting there going, motherfucker. And then you watch someone like, uh, like, like, uh, like Sean Patton tell a story, and you're like, God, that's what he was meant yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. That guy tells us that might he might be the best storyteller working. He just yeah. fucking owns a goddamn yeah, room. Yeah, man. Yeah, I did a guest set for 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 Sean Patton one time years ago at comedy on state yeah. and uh i stayed and watched his whole show afterwards usually if you do a guest set you just like bounce but i stayed and i watched and so so good man yeah he's just fucking he phenomenal. commits man. motherfucker god damn it i left that fucking card on the fucking bus again i'm fucking sorry no i was just thinking i left a card I was like, is this, is this a patent bit? I should no, know. No, no, I said I'm a horrible fucking. I, I, had to I didn't want to leave you. Podcast to someone. I was like, ah, uh, I go. Pretty much, it's me talking over people about myself for an hour. If you're a fan of mine, then you'll like it. If you want to meet that person, it's a bad place to meet them. Is on my podcast, dude. I had one guy I blocked this one guy in Australia because I had uh, Justin Wren on, right? Justin Wren's a mixed martial artist, hmm. and. uh and I did my pre-interview for Justin Wren and I listened to a podcast he did with Rogan not realizing that there were two people on that podcast. Oh, wow. So like it's two different mixed martial artists, Justin Wren and another guy. They're having yeah. to be friends. And I thought it was one person. So every answer that I heard yeah. was Justin Wren's. Yeah. So I started my interview. Do you remember this? Mm-hmm. I started my interview with 
so what was it like studying jujitsu in Brazil? And he's like, I've never studied jujitsu. I said, but yeah, but you were the world champion. He goes, oh, you're probably thinking of this guy. And I was like, oh my God, immediately. And so, and so, so all the information I had to talk that I wanted to talk about was not about him at all. It was about yeah. another person. Oh no! And so I struggled on that podcast. I struggled because I was like, <laughs> "Motherfucker!" I think I've, and then I think I listened to that other guy on another pod, like, yeah. So, and but I knew who Justin Wren was because I know I've heard him a million times. Yeah. Big pig me, dude. He's fucking changed it. I talked about him the other day. With the guys that run the Cash App. I was like, dude, I think that's great what you're doing with Justin Wren. But I didn't. I wasn't as prepared as I should have been, or right. I normally am, because right. I had done research on someone else and so on accident. Funny. Classic and, and Frank Hel Hel Helen Keller. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy from Australia is like, way to get Justin Red on your podcast and just talk about yourself. And I was, I was so burned by that comment because I yeah. know that I did that. Yeah. That I fucking blocked the guy. I was yeah. like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> go fuck yourself. You don't, you don't know. You don't know what it's like. <laughs> fucking, I don't read comments at all. I don't fuck with comments. You don't at fuck all. with comments. Uh, -uh. I fuck try not. Comments. I try not to, man. I try not to. It'll, Here's the deal. It'll, Here's it'll, the deal. It'll bum your day out. Here's man. the deal. All the good stuff. All the good stuff you want to say about yourself. Think about yourself. Read it. One negative thing. It just fucking. Yep. Spins you out of control. Yeah. Spit. Why? I don't read reviews of my act. I don't read reviews of my stand up. I didn't read a review of my book. I've never read a review of my TV shows. Because one fucking thing will spin me out, and then I, and then really? all this thing I love that I work so hard on, I go, is it really stupid? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, you just can't you connect to that. Second guess everything. When I got my first TV show, it was called The X Show on FX. It was in 1990, no, 1999, maybe wow. 2000, maybe before September 11th. It was, uh, emails were really big. I, uh, I know that. It seems like they were always big, but they were really big at the time. Like emails and the internet was really starting to pop off. Yeah. Um, like in a way, like fast speed and wasn't it wasn't what it was today. Uh and so they had a message board for this show. I replaced me and Gary Valentine, Kevin James's brother, yeah. me and Gary Valentine replaced two guys that had previously been on the show. And the fans were not happy about it. And they used to print out emails from fans that regarding your yourself yeah so you get emails from fans and so they would print out 100 emails telling me how bad i sucked and they would give them to me they'd leave in my green room every day i get a hundred emails and they'd give them to me like like here you go you want these and i'd read through them and i'd be like this isn't helping and no. they were like well we got them we got to print them and give them to you and everyone else is getting like positive emails and I was getting all these hor horrible emails. So then I, I'm, I walk, I'm reading every single one. You're fucking a known, you're fat, you're fucking this and that. Gary Valentine walks into my green room and he goes, Bertsky, what are you doing? And I go, I'm reading the fucking emails. He goes, you get good ones? And I went, no, they're really bad. And he goes, why are you reading them? And I was like, aren't we supposed to? And he goes, no, you can ignore those people because they don't have a job on television. They're not the executives and they're not the fucking director. They're just some guy behind a keyboard. Get the fuck up. Let's go yeah. drink. And yeah. we went, I was like, you don't have to read them. He's like, no, who the fuck <laughs> reads negative emails? I was reading every single one waiting for someone to say something nice. Like, oh, it was so fucking horrible. Yeah. And and then, and and a lot of times it's like, people the way on instagram to get followers is to be the most you know to be the top comment mm -hmm. the most one and you look at like look at chelsea handler right who's mm -hmm. fucking beautiful hilarious mm -hmm. fucking talented mm -hmm. smart as fuck her top comments always some fucking asshole being a dick because yeah. he knows that there's probably haters that are going on her thing too and maybe the haters will follow him because he yeah. like he knows he knows how to be savage keep yeah. it savage fuck that guy yeah dude and that happens to me all the time where you go one guy savage uh dot 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 everyone's that's what everyone says and you're like yeah he just he could have yeah. been cool yeah you know yeah yeah it's true where the fuck is that guy stuck i don't know dude do you hear that that's fucking great it's weird man i want to this we you know be a great podcast is if we could get portable and go out and interview that guy right now and oh. get all his rage man what's going on here? dude that it's amazing how much negativity that guy is fucking losing his goddamn mind yeah. and i don't know what kind of car that guy's it, commenting on chelsea's stuff right now yeah yeah do you do you read your comments on youtube 
I used to do it a lot, a lot, a lot more just because I think that it's smart to have some sense of how you're doing. But yeah, all it takes is just the one, and then and then it and then it throws you off. Segura and, called me the most racist comic in America. As, by the way, I don't even talk about no, race I, on stage. Yeah, not at so, all. So, um, and it took off like wildfire, and that is all that's over my Instagram. What? Yeah. Way to be the number one racist in America. You're not at, at, at all. It's it's a joke that they find funny. That's hilarious. And that, so that, that. and so my management called me and they're like, hey, we got to get in front of this. And I was like, no, we don't. There's no stopping it. What are you going to try to stop a wildfire? Like, Try to stop a wildfire. It just enjoys you trying to stop it. It's yeah. just winds are blowing. Let it blow itself out. It's yeah. going to burn out. And, yeah. or, it, or turn into some massive fucking joke. Yeah. But if, if we really are worried about news agencies picking this up and slanting it that I'm a rate, then that gets even fucking it funnier. Does. Yeah. I had a, a woman read the comments and then thought she'd go viral and posted, a, posted some video of how I started the synagogue shooting. Jesus. And, and you're like, all right. Like anyone, it's just proving fucking really that anything can be news now yeah. everyone wants their angle to be their narrative yeah. to drive that and you're like whatever like yeah. you can't you can't put any weight into it it's it's like that like if this was 1997 i would never know it yeah you just it's just you're fucking i, yeah. I mean i wish i wish the terrorists i wish i would team up with kim jong-un if he attacked social media if he was like i'm taking america <laughs> down and i'm taking all social media <laughs> oh fuck fuck what time is it I don't know. How, how long have we been going? Two hours. Okay. Oh, wow. oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, that, 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 that's okay. <laughs> I have a conference call. Yeah, that's um, okay. Um, so I'm, I'm going to postpone it. What? Uh, how do we wrap this up? What do we, what, where, where do we? We'll wrap it with the Kim Jong-un thing, I think. That is... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've, we've, we've come so far. <laughs> Nothing's going to top what you just said. I put it out on Rogan that I wanted to party with Kim Jong-un. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard a call yet. <laughs> I want to party with him. I I would. Would you party with Kim Jong Un if he's like? Oh. Of course. I mean, I don't even. I don't even party. But if that that's a one one lifetime. He thing. goes. I'm flying you over. Yeah. To no, to North Korea? No, yeah. we would. I would. No way. We, well, he's not coming here. To, yeah. Yes. Yeah, true. <laughs> he's not gonna... <laughs> true. Would you consider <laughs> meeting me halfway? Yeah. Um. All right. Let's do let's do party invitations. Donald okay. Trump hits you up and he's like, Hey man, I want to party. I want to fly out of my private. Look, you're already saying no. I've already I, said yes. I'm sorry. I've already said just, yes. I, you would say you would say yes. Fuck yes. Hang on, hang on. All right, what's the full? All right, he invites me. Okay, I, I, I maybe I went too soon. So he, listen, he, I already know what's going to happen to me. Okay. I know that the second I get there, he's going to put a MAGA hat on me, and I'll be like, oh. Yeah. And then he's going to be like, hey man, uh, let me like, I want to put you in a headlock. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, just do a bunch of emasculating shit to me. He's just tickling you. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely go party with Donald Trump. Oh man, I think for the what have he said? What have he said? What have he said? Here's okay. I'm, I'll be Donald. Okay. I don't do impressions right. very good. That's okay. A Drew. This is really good. <laughs> I'm. Oh my goodness. A Drew. <laughs> I want to fly you out on my private jet. Mm, yeah, see, yeah, see. I want to fly you on my private jet to Villa Lago or whatever the name of my place is, and I want to have. A uh, private event. Are you going to do uh, 10 minutes of stand-up? Just oh. 10 minutes of stand-up. Oh, I'm going to pay $100,000. And then I want you oh. to party and spend the weekend with me and my friends and go golfing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to Donald Trump? What do you say I don't to- know. Whoever you were, I would say yes to. Not, <laughs> um, yeah. Does it have to be golf? It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> Does it have to be golf? No, we, no, we can go snorkeling. Oh, yeah, I'll do the golfing. Yeah. Uh yeah, I guess yeah. I think I would I think I would, I think I would do it. Yeah. I'd I think I would him. do it. I mean, he's at least for the for the story of it, 100%. I mean, there's a lot of people that would go, I would never fucking meet that guy. And you're like, oh, "Okay." Yeah. Well, I think I would why? I think I would yeah. I mean, like, I would 100% do it for 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 the experience. Let's see who will we not meet. Um like if someone said I want to part like uh, R Kelly, I'd be like, "I'm going to pass." Yeah. Yeah, Har- yeah. Easy pass for Har- R Kelly, I would say I feel like I feel like I couldn't keep up with somebody like Kesha, or oh, no, no, no. I didn't know we were doing these. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. By oh, the way, yeah. by the way, yeah, I leave my <laughs> wife for Kesha. Ke- Kesha calls up and she's like, "Listen, I know that you and your family are on vacation in Hawaii. I'm over in Lanai. Can you? I have a boat coming to get you to spend the rest of the week with me." I'd be like, "She'd be like, are you there? Are you there?'" I'm like, "I'm in the water. I'm waiting for the boat. Where's the boat, Kesha?" 
Katy Perry. Katy Perry. There's on all those. Side. Taylor Swift is so fucking beautiful. Yeah. I yeah. guess she's like a child. She's yeah, like yeah. 23 or yeah, something. Yeah, you're, you're super. Yeah, really creepy. It would be very creepy if I dated yeah. her. What, but I I mean, what would I say to her after sex? You want to play on your iPad? <laughs> did your wife? Did your did, did your wife go with you on the, ro- on the on the road? No, my wife's a haggard bitch. Like, Whoa. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus Christ! No, she went with me. She went with me on the beginning of this tour. Yeah, uh, just kind of set up my tour bus, um, and she she's fun. She's fun to be with on the road. Yeah, she she because my wife sees everything with like rose colored glasses and wide eyes. Like that's, that's so great. She grew up pretty poor, so like the and the idea of anything, it's like she still gets impressed by hotel rooms. Wow. Like it was a nice. We had a nice hotel room in Vancouver. And she's like, this is a nice room. Look at that. They got just M and M's. And you're like, yeah, yeah, can you believe it? Like, Vegas. She just went to, with me to Vegas. I guess she goes on the road with me a lot now that I say this. Yeah. She went to the road with me to Vegas, and we had the suite, like the presidential suite. So, so, so good. And she was, I mean, she was like, I don't, you've never seen someone more excited about something. Like, she invited, we had a bunch of friends with us, and she'd invited them up to the room. We'd be like, hey, do you see this? And yeah. then like ordered a bunch of Prosecco and yeah. and like had like a food spread set out and yeah. wanted everyone in our room. This is amazing, isn't it? My wife really gets into that shit. Yeah. Um, where is it? It it it's lost on me because all I think is, I don't I don't need this nice of a room. Like I like nice stuff, but I don't need this nice of a room. Sure. I could just def- like I remember one time I went somewhere with uh, another comic and we I think we were doing a casino and they switched the rooms. And he had the suite, and I had just the single king. Yeah. And he was like, "Hey, man, I, th- I think I got your room." And I was like, "Really?" And he was like, "Yeah." And I go, "Let me see." And I saw it. It was like, "Oh yeah, you definitely got my room." He was like, "You want to switch?" I was like, "Nah, you you enjoy it. Yeah. Like you're, yeah, you definitely enjoy it. I'll, I'm I'm fine. I'm all I'm doing is sleeping there. But and then I was like, "But if I want to party in here, yeah, I'm going to yeah. party in here." <laughs> yeah. And he was like, "Oh yeah, I understand." I go, "Just so you know, we're not going to go drink back in my room. If we're going to drink, we're going back to your room." And he's like, "Okay, cool." That's I did so that. Cool. I did that. I remember one time that that happened with a, an executive producer and me. We were going. We were staying at the Hotel California, mm-hmm. and this executive producer uh, accidentally got the nice room. And as the host, you always got the nice room. Oh, I see. And he was like, and he didn't want to give it up. And I said, "That's fine." But, but remember, we're partying in here because this is the yeah. nice room. This is where everyone meets to party. Yeah. And he was like, no, we're not partying here. And I was like, then you don't get the nice room. Yeah. You yeah. got to take the shitty room if you want to go to sleep. Yeah. But if you Like I go, I'm going to party every night. The whole crew will party. 11 people will party together. We're yeah. not going to cram in my fucking shit room. Right. You right, take right. the shit room. I'll take the nice room and right. we'll party in my room. And he was like panicked. He was like, uh, uh, uh. and then he just locked his door. What? Yeah, he just locked his door. He's like, I'm going to bed now. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy, though. I was, yeah. uh, I used to fucking break that guy's balls incessantly. Ugh. I used to, he, because he was just a little, he was a, it was a little high strung of a guy at times. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> I remember one time we were in, uh, we were in Hawaii. This, this made him fucking, I, I used you're in, to, you're, you're in Hawaii? We were in Hawaii. It's amazing. And, uh, we were doing a show down there. And we had a dispute on what wheels up meant. Like mm-hmm. I go, is wheels up? <laughs> this is like this is the way my brain works. I could talk about shit like this for hours. I go, is wheels up? Wheels up for everyone listening is a term we use in in the industry of like that's when we got to go. But I go, is wheels up when we get in the car or is wheels up when we get downstairs? Like what's because wheels up sounds like when we get in the car. So if it's wheels up at 10 o'clock, I'll be down here at 945. But if it's wheels up at 10 o'clock, that's where we get downstairs. Then technically we leave at 1015. What's wheels up mean? And he got so, it was like. It, is, so wheels up is when you leave. No. Really? I, by the way, I've had this conversation with a hundred producers. I feel like wheels up is when, is, is when, is when you leave. I'm not a, a producer, second. but. Hang on one second. I'm calling Stacy. Oh my god! <laughs> this I've I've made this guy so fucking crazy. So, hang on, let's see. I remember I did a podcast. This is one of my best friends. Well, we'll find out if she answers. Yeah. Um. Well, hello. Hey, what's up? Nothing. What's going on? Nothing. I'm having a conversation, and I need your help. And okay. and I know you I know you I know you know that I've had this conversation a lot. Is we okay. does wheels up is wheels up when you meet in the lobby or when the actual vehicle should be taking off? When the vehicle should be taking off. Okay, so if it's wheels up at ten o'clock, you need to be downstairs at nine forty five. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Perfect. 
<laughs> All right, I'll call you back, okay? Okay. Bye. <laughs> so, so, so I'm, I'm with her on that. Yeah, yeah. Wheels yeah. up is when you're driving away. Right, right. So I go, so I said to this guy, I won't say his name. Yeah. I, I go, we're at dinner. And I go, what time's wheels up tomorrow? And he says, wheels up, wheels up at 6 a.m. I go, wow, it's early. And he goes, yeah, it's wheels up at 6 a.m. And I said, okay, so I'll be downstairs at 6. He goes, no, no, no. It's wheels up at 6 a.m. You need to bounce downstairs at 545. I go, wheels up is 545. He goes, no, wheels up is 6 o'clock. <laughs> Call time is 6. Be downstairs at 545. So I'm downstairs at 545, and he's not there. He was at a different hotel. It's 6 o'clock, and he's not there. At 615, he pulls up, opens the door, and I go, wait, what's wheels up mean again? <laughs> <laughs> he lost this fucking shit. I said, I said to him, I, I got so confused. I thought you said heels up. I've been standing on my tippy toes. <laughs> I would not let it go. And he fucking lost his shit. It was so fucking fun. Oh, all day I kept going, are we wheels up right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. I, that's what I miss about television. The only thing I miss is traveling with a big group like that. But you get yeah. a little bit on a tour bus. Yeah. Yeah. But I loved working for Travel Channel. There's 11 people. Oh, it's it crazy, fucking man. greatest. Those are like my best friends. We fucking had so much fun. I imagine you love it. I mean, you you, you enjoy being around, around people. You I like, enjoy I love yeah. fun. Yeah. I love people. I love to fuck around. Yeah. I love little, I like get excited for little things. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do for fun? <sighs> Dude, not much, man. I feel, <sighs> I, I, I'm serious. I'm, I'm, it's not, it's, I'm, I feel, I feel so old. I mean, I, you're 20. Seven. I feel old, Bert. I'm not. I'm not saying I am. I'm saying I. I I'm saying I, I. feel so old. What just, hobbies do you have? I write. I, that's not a hobby. Uh, do the, can I? I was in therapy. Okay. And I still am, but I haven't gone in a while. And my therapist said, "By the way, this is going to play out, pan out perfectly." My therapist said, um, "What hobbies do you have?" And I said, "I." do stand up yeah and he goes that's not a hobby that's your job i said why well, write and he goes that's not your hobby that's your job i said i have a vlog he goes once again that's not your hobby that's your job i said i have a, a podcast i guess it doesn't count and he goes no you need a hobby like get a hobby i said i've always wanted to work with leather <laughs> and he was like awesome go get some leather and make some and try not to make it about work and so i made a fanny pack out of leather that i cut myself and stitched myself but in the middle of making this fucking fanny pack i started going i could sell these I on could the make road these, yeah. i could sell these on the road <laughs> i'm gonna show you the fucking fanny pack you ready to yeah, fucking dude. see the worst fanny pack in the world i'm so excited for it <laughs> oh Dude, dude, that I made that fucking uh -huh. fanny pack. <laughs> it's so big, you can't do anything with it. The pockets are so. Oh, it's so fucking big, dude. And then all in that corner, right by that beer mug, is all my leather stuff. I never touched it again. Wow, dude, this is yeah. This is this this is like uh. I bet I could sell that on the road. Like a gift shop in like in like old Vegas would sell would would sell these. Maybe I'll start selling Indian fanny packs on uh, Mercari. Wow, man, that doesn't, that doesn't, it's that not doesn't comfortable at all. Good. And you no. can't put anything in it. No, but it does look cool. It's like that got like a little like natural Looks flap like, to it. Like a pocket that goes yeah. on like ass, assless chaps. Yeah. Wow, dude, that is, uh, yeah, you should just stick to work stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no more hobbies, Bert. <laughs> If anyone wants to buy it, go to burperbird.com where I sell fanny packs and wallets that you can't get your credit cards out of. <laughs> you need a hobby. Yeah, I know. I, I, I frisbee golf some, sometimes. Oh, I love disc golf. Do you love disc when golf? When do you go play disc golf? Dude, I go, all, I mean, I go once every two weeks or so whenever I'm in town. Really? You want to go sometime? I would we'll love go. to play disc golf. Yeah, it's so much fun. Fuck yeah. I haven't so played disc golf in forever. Yeah. We used to play disc golf and we jog it. And we jog the whole time. Oh, you so like a workout kind of yeah, kind of thing. It was I the love that. Best, dude. Play I love disc that. Golf and then jog to your next shot. Yeah. Set it up. Throw it. Jog to your next. Well, shot. nothing gets more. Nothing gets more excited. Well, first of all, when you first throw it, nothing gets more excited than just 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 going to go see how where where how dude, close it is to the next thing. We used to play disc golf around our in college around our uh, around Tallahassee. Yeah. Around the school. Yeah. And we'd be like, all right. You'd be at a bar. We'd go from like bar to bar, but we'd run throughout and go through the campus to another bar. We'd be like, all right. Uh, you'd be like uh, on Landis Green. You go, okay, uh, 
the fountain. Yep. And so it was that was so much fun. My buddy but my buddy Hutch used to play with an aerobi. What's that? <laughs> it's like the it's the the oh, yeah. circle the that goes like the... fucking a thousand feet. Yeah, yeah. So he'd be like, No one said no aerobies. Yeah. And and you'd be like, he's like, I drive with an aerobi. That's how I throw. Come on. It's weighted. Yeah. yeah. It's and so it would go like it would go literally easily a hundred yards yeah, on just on just a you can't throw a drone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No one said no drones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This golf's a good one. What else? Let's so, see. What's something you want to do? Um, you know what? I think I could get I I, th- I don't really drink much, but when I did, I was a huge fan of, of 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 IPAs. I would love to like it would be so cool to like make a make a beer, but I don't know sh- I don't know I would shit like to do about, that. I was, about, I would, about it. Man. I was talking to Tom Papa about making pickles. That I sounds mind great, into great too. Like I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy about like 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 cooking. I don't. I'm not crazy about that. I'm not good at it. I just. Yeah. I don't. I'm not good at it. But like you know, like trying something like that where you can like be like, look, I made this thing would be a really cool thing. I love exercise. I mean, I love to work really? out and biking and all that hiking? business. Yeah, hiking. I love. I love to hike today. I like your shoes, by the way. Oh, maybe thank I'm you, gonna man. pickle something today. I'm gonna try to do. I want to make. Candied jalapenos. You ever had candied jalapenos? No, they sound sound incredible. They're fucking amazing. Is it is it sweet? It's sweet and 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 it's and spicy. Sweet and spicy. It's yeah. the best thing I've ever had. If I if I I'll see if we have any in the in our thing. I'll give yeah. you a jar. Yeah, they're fucking amazing. That they're the best insane. thing I've ever had. Candy jalapenos. Maybe I'll make some candied jalapenos today. I was gonna smoke a turkey. Dude. Yeah. I was you gonna look, go you buy got... a turkey. I'm on a, I'm on a cleanse. Yeah. So I'm like trying to eat clean. But uh, I was going to go buy a turkey and smoke it in my smoker. What's, what's the cleanse that you do? I do, uh, I told, I think I told this to someone last night. I do uh, almond juice, berries, hemp protein, and uh, mean green as mm. a shake. It's like $230 yeah, yeah, calorie yeah. shake. I do that for, with maybe a little kale in there to spice yeah. it up. Um, I do that for breakfast. I do, my snacks are rice cake with either almond butter or rice cake with uh, avocado yeah and then for lunch it's lean protein and greens yeah and then if i did i did dinner last night i had steak actually i fucked up because i did something's burning last night so i ate a lot of fucking shit yeah, yeah but um but for dinner i try to either do a shake or i do another lean protein and greens i'm working out a lot so i'm I'm okay with going over like 1500 calories yeah but usually you stay under a thousand calories but you, ch- you 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 change up your diet a, a, a lot right a lot yeah i'm have I you found one you, that's like your favorite? Like one that's like I I, I, I can't I do it. I can't I like this one. This one's my favorite because I need sweet stuff. And so yeah. you can have almond butter, you can have um berries, you can have, like I can't I tried to do uh the paleo not paleo shit, but the keto. Hot, keto. I tried doing keto. keto. I just tough, crave man. cookies. It's tough. Yeah, I literally crave it's tough. cookies. You get cut, but like it, it, it it's just because you wouldn't don't have any kind of sugar or any kind of something. Yeah. Like it doesn't. It doesn't go. I mean, I'm doing a thing right now where it's where it's it, it's like it's just no sugar and it's very whole foods based. So every meal for me is like chicken, avocado, uh, r- r- rice, and like no no gluten. I'm not doing gluten. I hate say, saying it too. Yeah. I hate saying, "Do you have any gluten free?" Because it oh, it makes vegan. me feel like I used to hear it, dude. I used to hear people say, "No, no, can do you have gluten free?" Or and it sounds so bourgeois. I was vegan for like two days, three days. <laughs> 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 so you didn't eat for two or three, three days i did it was a lot of fun my stomach felt great really? crazy yeah the third day uh i ate a brisket a 15 pound brisket yeah, i split do. it with i split it with a couple of guys yeah that'll do. and i had aggressive diarrhea the next day <laughs> <laughs> like and we were on a tour bus so there was no like i was like uh pull over now but yeah. it was, I liked we had uh veggie burgers. They make those Yeah. I liked those a They're lot. Good. They're good. Dr. Man. Prager's makes a great burger. Dude, vegan people vegan like culture is getting to be so good. It was it's, not good at all three or four or five 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 years ago. But. Yeah, I, my sister and I did, had some vegan meals. My sister's kind of vegan, but it's not for like moral reasons. She yeah. just it's like she likes it a little better. I think it makes her feel better. Sure, sure. But um it was crazy because I told people I was vegan so obnoxiously much. Like I I would say to everyone I was vegan. I loved it. And then I was like, oh, that's why vegans do that. <laughs> it's fun <laughs> as fuck. I'm better than you. I can do something you can't do. I don't kill animals. <laughs> and then of course, of course, I, I go vegan. I go vegan in an airport. I'm drinking in an airport. Someone goes, I go, I got to clean my lifestyle up. This road's killing me. 
I'm with my assistant, my buddy Paul, and, my, and Paul goes, why don't you uh, go vegetarian? I was like, too easy. I was like, I'll go vegan. And he was like, really? I go, yeah, wow. I'll see how long I can go vegan for. So I go vegan at the airport bar in Miami or in, uh, <laughs> in Fort Lauderdale. I get on the plane to fly to, uh, I guess I was flying home. No, I, mean, I don't know where I was, but I get in the airport, I get on the plane and the lady comes back. She goes, uh, uh, what do you want for lunch? I said, well, what do you have? Like, what do you have? She goes, uh, we have chicken and we have pasta. I said, does the pasta have any cheese on it? She goes, no. I said, is there any meat in it? She goes, nope. It's just pasta and sauce. I go, I go with the pasta. So we get our meals. I start eating my meal. And uh, the guy sitting next to me goes, are you are you allergic to dairy? I said, no, no, no. I'm glue, I'm vegan. And he goes, you're vegan? I go, yeah. He's eating chicken next to me. And he goes, you know, pasta has egg in it, right? And I was like, seriously? And he loses it. And he goes, this is what I love about you people. You claim to be vegan. You're drinking a double Tito's and soda, eating pasta. He goes, how long have you been eating pasta, buddy? I go, my whole life. And he goes, you've been eating pasta your whole life and you say you're vegan. He doesn't know I've only been vegan for yeah. about 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, and I was like, yeah. And I was like, and he was like, and you're going to keep eating the pasta? I was like, well, yeah, fuck it. I already eat it, right? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I guess I'm a vegan that eats pasta. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got home and someone was like, hey, not all pasta is vegan. Right. Not all pasta has egg in it. Right, right, right. And I was like, oh, maybe I was still vegan. I like how you don't even have to be eating some, 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 some. Like the moment you decide that you want to start doing vegan, then you're a vegan. Yeah. Like you're just like, it was, it was 45, five minutes. It's harder to be a Christian, I think. <laughs> Because like, you have to accept Jesus in your heart if you're a Christian. If you're vegan, you're just like, I'm vegan. No, I'm not. I'm yeah. off. I'm on. I'm not on it. Yeah. Some of the vegans, like, do you see the vegans going after Steve O? No. Because his cat's not vegan? Oh. He feeds his cat meat? Oh, what? That's weird, man. And they're That's... like, your cat should be vegan. And again, again with news, anything can be so. And so, Steve O so, so, just so fucking went after him. Like, yeah. he, they both went at it. And people were like, fucking. I feel like going, it's Steve-O, guys. Yeah. He swallowed a goldfish yeah, once. Yeah, yeah. Like, he he's then eat, threw he's, it up in a cup. He's eaten cats that have eaten yeah, things. Yeah, why did. are you... The fuck? He jerked off an eel. Yeah, like, it's, yeah. Who gives a fuck? He's doing so much better than he ever has done in his life. Yeah, It's yeah. Steve-O. Let him go. Like, give him a fucking pass. Yeah, dude. He's done more for fucking... He climbed a goddamn tower to save a fucking orca. Collected parts of his scrotum his whole life. He doesn't... You can't make him out to like it's not even like it's off brand. If like, you could see one celebrity going to stand up, like you know, like someone like Steve who started in one way and then ended up in stand up, who would it be? Uh, who would be the perfect guy to get into stand up? Like right now, Will Smith's doing stand up. I guess I would want to wait for like humorous, like just to see what could happen, or you like ge like genuinely you both. Want... I want to see I want to see train wreck, and then I want to see one where you go. I think he would pull it off great. I think Owen Wilson could kill it because he's just so oh, Owen yeah. Wilson. He's oh, like yeah. he, his voice is already a like you you know if you use like an actor who's like even like you know Vince Vaughn. I mean Vince Vaughn did his tour, but like you know Vince Vaughn, I could listen to him I could monologue listen to him for to anything. You know, Trainwreck, Oprah Winfrey. I think <laughs> it's random, but I think yeah. like if she, like what would you? I mean, Ellen kind of did something, so, you know, Ellen at the top of her last special, she was talking about like all of the money that she, you know, has yeah. and doing it in a really, really clever way. Christian is... Slater would be a good train wreck one to watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <We> just... <laughs> or Christian Bale, any of the, any Christian, of the Christians. Yeah, any of the Christians. Yeah. I would like to see Ben Affleck do stand up. Who? Ben Affleck. Oh, Ben Affleck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I thought you said Ben Affleck. You said a winner. Weird... Ben Affleck. You, Isn't ben that how you say oh, his name? No, no, He's no. He's my favorite. He's ben... one of my favorite humans. Ben, ben, I, ben Affleck. I connect with that guy so much on really? Strong. Oh, yeah. Why? Dude, I'm in love with Jennifer Garner because of Ben Affleck. Wow. Well, you just love his, you just love his, his style? Or just I like his, saying his name for one. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> if you, if that's what you call it. No, but his, he, I like that. I like that he, that he's just been this like beacon of white privilege. Like just everything about him has been like privilege yeah a little bit not not his childhood or anything right, but right. this his career and then he drinks hard as fuck so clearly he has a hard time loving himself right right and right. i just i love i love the like the broodingness in his eyes like the deepness that he can't access as an actor but as a human he <laughs> fucking totally is dialed into is that bad that i'm saying this yeah. about him i but i love ben affleck i love him and dude jennifer garner was someone i just did not give a fuck about while she was working right, but right, when right. i saw that picture of him take her taking ben affleck to the uh, gross, not to the grocery, to rehab, mm -hmm. and they were in the Taco Bell, Taco Jack in the Box drive-through. Yeah, dude, I was like, that's a that's all. 
That's one bad bitch right there. That's yep. one fucking thugged out mom. Yeah. Fucking not even married to him anymore. The yeah. father of my children. Get in the fucking back. Yeah. Two tacos, extra hot sauce. Yeah. Diet Coke. We got to keep him up, up and get him there. <laughs> he's, he's, he's Batman. Yeah. Dude, I fucking love Ben Affleck. Wow. I would love for him to fall off the wagon with me. With you? Yeah. Like for him to be like, I got a bar and like I'm sitting at a bar and he, not, not because of me, with me. Gotcha. I'm at a bar. We're in Hollywood. Fuck that. I'm gonna borrow one North Hollywood on uh on on uh Moore Park, right? Yeah. Moore Park and Tahunga. Jesus. I know the bar. Yeah. It's like a nice dive sports bar. I saw mm-hmm. Corbin Bur- Burnson walking out of it one time. It's a good place to not get recognized. Nice. I'm sitting there, right? I'm going through some shit. I'm having a drink. It's like one o'clock. I might go drink today. Um and the door opens, you know, like light shines in. Guy sits next to me. He goes, uh, uh, Johnny Walker, black, double, neat. And I look over. It's Ben Affleck. And he goes, uh, how you doing? Uh, good. How you doing? He's like, I've had better days. I said, really? He takes it. And he shoots it back. And he goes, I've been sober for eight months. Fuck it. And he's like, and then he looks at me. He goes, what are you doing? I was like, I'm following you around all fucking day. <laughs> As me and Ben Affleck. Wow. We end up doing cocaine in Malibu. And I'm telling him, I don't need my blood pressure medicine. We're going to stay out this late. If we're doing coke like this, I need my blood pressure medicine, man. We got to go back to my house. I need you to sneak in my house. I'll tell you the code to the door. But you need to sneak into the house and get my blood pressure medicine. My dog's cool, but you don't wear a hat. She'll fucking freak out. Oh, my God. And then Ben Affleck and I come back. He sneaks into my house. He comes running out. And he's like, your wife's awake. And he's got my blood pressure medicine in his hand. He's like, your wife's awake. Start the fucking car. Start the fucking car. And my wife comes out, Bert. Who the fuck? What the fuck? And, and he's like, quick, we need to stop by my house, get more money. You need to break in. Jennifer Garner's cool. Don't worry. And then, oh, it's our fucking night ends us in a boat uh, trying to break in, trying to cross the border into Tijuana on a boat. Jesus Christ. And, we're, and it's just me and him, shirtless. He's got khakis on. I've cut my jeans into shorts. And we're both sunburnt. And he was like, this is a mistake. We should have brought water. And I'm like, I'm like, I agree, man. We should have definitely had water for this trip. Next morning, we wake up on a beach in hammocks. And he's like, he's like, listen, man, I was fucked up yesterday. I'm sorry I got you involved with me. I hope this doesn't come back to negatively hurt your career. And I go, dude, I, I made all my choices. I'm an adult. And he goes, I have a jet picking us up and taking us into Van Nuys. If you're, if you know, if you want to go back home. I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm with you. Whatever you want to do. And we go back to, we get on the jet. And on the jet, he's like, we should probably have one more cocktail for the flight, right? And I'm like, I go, oh, do we have to take this to Van Nuys? He's like, where do you want to go? I go, fucking Vegas. Come on, bro. And so we take the jet to Vegas and we live there for a month. Wow. <laughs> Dude, I've thought about this. Yeah. Jesus, man. I hope that that gets back to Ben Affleck on one of his low days. <laughs> and he just and he just shows up at that fucking sports bar on, on more Park. Every day. Every day <laughs> looking for me. Just, is he here? Is he here? Well, so I want to, so hang on. I want to ask this and then I have to, I did the restroom, but I want to, I want to ask this. It's, just, it's, been, it's, been, it's, been, it's been, it's been nine days. I want to, I want to, so you've hit, in, you've hit such an, a great calib, like such an, high tier caliber of, 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 of stand up and how many people have seen it. Have you ever had a moment where you had a celebrity either from our genre or for someone else that was at your show where you were like, oh, this is this 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 is pretty fucking cool. Like this where you felt like like you know, like, like uh, to me, like you know, think about Seb- I think about Sebastian. Like, has Jer- Jerry comes to Sebastian's oh, shows? Yeah, I don't got that. And I think that's you know. I uh no, it's you know, like, like Chris Porter's like parties with you know, Chris, you know, his no, friends with Kid Rock and stuff like that. Or, I don't you know? have anything like that. I mean, I've had like I've uh, I don't I maybe I have it. I don't remember it or I'm not yeah. registering it, but not really. I don't really. I've had people come to my shows and then tweet me that it was great, and then I go, "Oh, I didn't you say hi?" And they're like, oh, "I didn't." That's right, not who right, I am. right. But not that I can think of. I think I'll bet fr- you do. I'll bet you do. But I mean, I'm sure I do. I just don't. I can't yeah, yeah. think of it off the top of my head. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, that's really. really I get starstruck really, really pretty cool. easy too, and I yeah. lose my shit over celebrities. Really? Yeah, and in an unhealthy you, way. You met you met you've met some. You're like, oh yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I met a bunch of celebrities, and I know I'm not cool about it. <laughs> <laughs> like who? Like who? Uh, the Foo Fighters. They were oh, a yeah. show the other night that I did in Hollywood, and uh, not Hollywood in Beverly Hills. 
But they didn't. But they. But they. They didn't say like th- th- one way or the other whether they watch your. No. They, yeah. They knew who I was. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That, that, that's incredible. That's yeah, what but, I mean. Uh, no. But I. But it was. It was. Uh, I'm just not good. I think I called Pat. Pat Smear gay, and I'm not sure if I did. Oh, wow. and he's not. Oh wow. But I, I might have really fucked that one up. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. I told him that he was the first gay guy. I no, I'm fucking don't want to talk about this and. <laughs> I think Dave Grohl knew what I was going at and was like, all right, let's wrap this up. It was good meeting you, man. Awesome. You go, oh, yeah, no. it was really uncomfortable. It was really every you're that You're that guy. You're the one who's like, nah. fuck it up every fucking <laughs> time. If there's a way to fuck it up, I find a way to fuck it up. <laughs> Tom Cruise. I'm sitting at a fucking party Why? telling a story. All the people are really excited about my story. I realize it's not my story. There must be something going on over my shoulder. And I bump into Tom Cruise. This is right after he shot Magnolia when he had his hair wow. long. And I bumped into him. He smiles at me. I look at him and I go, you have beautiful hair. And he went, thank you. And just walked away. <laughs> Dude. Oof. I am horrible at those moments. That's those... better than what I I would have done with Tom Cruise. Like, I I mean, I probably would have lost my shit too. Probably. Oh, I. Yeah, I'm not good with that shit. There's some wow. people that are good with it. But I, it's usually like. Even like Chappelle, like I mean, well, the first time I ever met Chappelle, I'd say met Chappelle. I don't know Chappelle, like yeah, I don't. I don't think at all. I mean, I, don't, I know who he is. I don't think he knows who I am. Although I, I don't know. Yeah, I was in Dayton. I was in Dayton at the Dayton Funny Bone, and I was getting paid. You know, when you get paid at a yeah. club, they you, no one else is like they like kick everyone out of the room. And Chappelle just walks in the room as I'm getting my check. And I didn't. I didn't check, put check. two and two together. I was check like, check. I just thought it was someone getting like. Someone that worked in the kitchen or a waiter walking into the room. And I was like, what the? F-? And, I, and I, then I went, oh, my God, you're Dave Chappelle. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, it was like bizarre as fuck that he just walked into the room. And yeah. I was like, and then I and then was what's interesting in that story. And then I'll let you go to the bathroom. Yeah. Is that he uh, he's he was like, yeah, I'm having a hard time writing. I'm having a hard time coming up with new material. This is a while ago. And I was like, oh, he's just like us. Like, he's got to write it, too. Yeah. He, no, it doesn't get delivered, dropped off at his door in a golden envelope. Yeah. And he's like, I'll be telling this one to open. Right, right, He's got right. to live it and write it, too. And I was like, oh, fuck, that's interesting. I never felt like he was more human in my entire life. Right. And he was like, I can't write anything. I don't have anything new. It's all fucking old shit. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Yeah. But. Yeah. Who's the biggest, who's the most famous person you ever met? Oh man! Besides Howie Mandel, yeah, I guess that was. I mean, that's. I met I met, I met Bo 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 Burnham. Um, do you know who Do you know who that is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he's next no. one. Okay, all right. Sorry, I <laughs> met Bo Christ. Burnham's. We all assistant. met Bo Burnham in Montreal. What the fuck are you dropping, Bo Burnham? For? Forget it. <laughs> I held my pee for too long. All right, this. this is fucking right. awesome. Here, dude, plug your plug your YouTube channel. All right, anything um, you got going on? Um, no, no, uh, Tour not, dates. not not really. I'm doing um, I you know what? I'm doing a, I'm doing some theaters in Atlanta and um, New Orleans, so that should be really Joy fun. Theater? Um, no, the Buckhead in Ooh. in in Atlanta. Ooh, nice, nice. Yeah, you done Atlanta? Yeah, I just I did it there last yeah. two weeks ago. They're 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 fun crowds, right? Fuck yeah, yes, yeah. So I'm doing those, and then you know what? I'll be in. I'll actually be in London in uh in in June. So those are the three kind of theater ones I'm trying to trying to trying trying to push. But we'll go out and see yeah. him live, and don't leave a negative comment on his Instagram. Yeah, Say man. you did not phone that in. <laughs> You faxed it in. She, yeah, it's dated. <laughs> Dude, this has been a pleasure. Thank Thanks, you so much. Babe. This has been the probably one of the easiest podcasts I've ever done in my fucking life. Thanks, Bert. Dude, Bert, thank Bert, you Bert, so Bert. much. Yeah, thanks, man.